Hello, my lovelies, and welcome to this week's Age of Sigmar Battle Report. I am Luca from MiniWarGaming.com, joined by Andy from Grey Matter Gaming, and we are continuing the action in the Mortal Realms. But this time, it'll be Soul Blade Grave Lords against Skaven in a 2,000 point match. We play and call it work. Mini War Gaming's Age of Sigmar Battle Report. Let's take a look at the Soul Blight Grave Lords today. I'll be playing the Virkos Dynasty, and to go along with that, I'll be playing a Highlander format, which is there can be only one of every unit type in my list. I can't duplicate my units. Why am I doing it? Well, sometimes it's kind of fun to do and you get to see different things in the list. Uh, I have a Rhydocar, the Beast in the list. That's the main reason I'm playing Virkos. Uh, I realized we had this model. I never really got to use him once, I think, and uh, his rules seem kind of neat. He's just a big fighty vampire thing, which is kind of what I always want my vampires to be. And here we have the beast. Now for Virkos, I noticed they can give command traits and artifacts to their unique characters, which is against the grain for Sigmar, but I'm gonna try it out anyways. Uh, we have Hunter Snare on him, which is the one I would imagine everyone takes on him. Now, I'm not too sure if he is of sound mind in this form. I don't know, it's hard to say. I was gonna give command to another vampire, but I would like to imagine he has some sense of what's going on in this bestial form. Anyways, uh, that is enough of Radicar. The rest of my list will be in a battle regiment. And second in command, a lieutenant of sorts, will have a vampire lord equipped with the Ulfen Carni Phylactery, giving an additional ward save to summonable units holding within nine. He'll know Spirit Gale as a spell. Still a pretty damn good spell, even though it's been nerfed. Rightfully so. The rest of my characters will be a White King and a Necromancer with Fading Vigor. My three battle line options are the only battle lines I have right now. Uh, one unit of reinforced dead walker zombies, a unit of ten dire wolves, and a unit of reinforced death rattle skeletons. Again, I cannot duplicate my units, so those are the ones I had to bring for battle line. I'll have a corpse cart with an unholy lodestone to support the zombies. A unit of reinforced grave guard with great white blades. And lastly, one mortis engine. My triumph, if I get it, will be indomitable. Just to keep uh, things on the table if I need them. And my grand strategy will be lust for domination. I have to control my grave sites at the end of the game here. And that is it for the Soul Blight. Let's go see what Andy is bringing with his Skaven. My name is Andy from Grey Matter Gaming. I'm bringing my Skaven today and I'm trying out a new f list. And I'm bringing uh, a two Grey Seer on Screaming Bell list. So this will be fun. They have the enhancement to let them take an extra spell, so both of them are going to have Skitter Leap and Death Frenzy. My general is actually going to be a Grey Seer on foot, who has the command traits Master of Magic. He'll also have Skitter Leap and Hoarfrost in order to keep things fun. To round out my characters, I have a Warlock Bombardier. He is the artifact, the Warp Resonator, it gives me an extra Warp Spark token every turn. And his spells is more, more, more warp power, of course, and Merciless Blizzard. Finally, my last character is a Master Molder. My battle line, I have two units of 20 clan rats, a double reinforced unit of giant rats, so it's a unit of 18, and a double reinforced unit of scryer acolytes. So they can run and shoot, hopefully they can put out some damage. To round out my list, I have three Plague Claw Catapults, a Hell Pit Abomination with Toughened Sinews, and I'm taking a Warp Grinder. My endless spells are the Bell of Doom and Warp Lightning Vortex. So with the Bell of Doom, I actually have three bells in the list. So we'll have fun with this and we'll see how it goes. I do have a Grand Battery Battalion for the Play Clock Catapults, a Warlord Battalion to give me that enhancement, and a Battle Regiment to round everything out. Now that you've seen the lists and the forces, let's go see what they're fighting over. We have an important territory, a border dispute here between the Skaven and the Soulblight Grave Lords. Now, mechanically, we're going to be playing the Ice Fields. That is six objectives on the table. We are going to be deploying along the short table edges opposite one another in a hammer and anvil style deployment 18 inches apart from one another. Each player will have three objectives wholly within their territory. As you can see, the territories encompass half of the board. Now, the twist to this border dispute, this ice fields mission, is that the battlefield itself is actually quite dangerous. It has been raining for a prolonged period of time. It is still currently raining now. The battlefield is muddy, it is slippery, it is hard to move around, and in fact, it is dangerous to recklessly move around. So, what that means is every time you run, 
you will suffer D3 mortal wounds to represent slipping, falling, losing some models uh, in the mud, stuff like that. And if you make a charge roll, for each die that shows a one before any modifiers, they'll suffer D3 mortal wounds. Uh, so kind of devastating and tricky to move around. Now, the way scoring is going to work is standard. You'll get one for one, one for two, and one for more, and two per battle tactic. And at the end of the game, you'll get three additional victory points if you're able to accomplish your grand strategy. Whoever has the most amount of victory points after scrapping in the mud for five battle rounds will be the winner of this little border dispute. And a couple of things to note before we get into the game. Don't forget, if you want to come by and play some war games with us here at Mini Wargaming, go to miniwargaming.com slash challenge for all the details. Any game you kind of want to play, reach out. We might be able to play it. Mostly Sigmar, mostly 40k, definitely look for Heresy. And all the small games too, you know I love Lord of the Rings and you know Josh loves Marvel Crisis Protocol, so keep that in mind. Also, if you're watching this, you probably like Age of Sigmar just a little bit. Steve and myself from Mini Wargaming stream every Wednesday at 5 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Every Wednesday, well, so far every Wednesday. You never know. Sometimes there might be cancellations. Anyways, that is over at Mountain Miniatures. If you're not already a viewer, go check it out. We do a lot of Warhammer Fantasy and a lot of Age of Sigmar. We keep it on the fantasy side over there, typically. See you there, and uh, enjoy the show. And here we have a look at the battlefield. So the terrain is uh, aquarium terrain and stuff made by Adam over at Greenleaf Terrain. And then some prints that we here have at the Mini Wargaming Forge, available at other websites as well. But more importantly, we got ourselves a brand new battle mat on display here at Mini Wargaming. This is called the Deep Forest, isn't it? Yes, Deep Forest <laughs> by Grey Matter Gaming. Absolutely. So we got Andy here from Grey Matter Gaming bringing some of the content they have available over at their website. If you want to check them out, like I said, it was greymattergaming.org. But you can just go to the description down below and check out what they have available because that is where the website link will be. And again, we'll talk about it a little bit later. But I just wanted to go into details about this battle mat because it's one of my favorites. I love any battle mat with roads on it, especially dark fantasy themed ones, which is exactly what we have here. So using some of the train we have here at Mini War Gaming to kind of accent that even further. And I think you guys see exactly what we were trying to go for with this table. And I think it turned out beautifully as well. Uh, we have some of the markers down for the objectives and whatnot. I got my gravesite. Gravesite, Gravesite, Gravesite. I will be deploying on this side of the table. And then Andy and his forces will be deploying over here. Uh, we have a Naho, Naho, and a Naho over there. And again, we play with a lot of terrain. So the fences are all for looks only. They will not be slowing us down. They will not be interrupting the gameplay at all. Otherwise, the game is quite a bit harder to play with fences slowing you down. But they make the table look so much better, it's hard to not use them. And we got ourselves what I would like to call a shallow lake over here. So more just for the looks than anything, but you never know, might come into play later. I have my doubts, but we shall see. Anyways, Andy and I are going to go ahead and deploy our forces, and we're going to be right back. And voila, the deployment is done. I was... Uh... Pretty much an entire one drop list except for Mr. The Beast here. I got four characters in this one. Uh, and I realized as I was deploying him, I don't have his stupid little honor guard. I don't know where they are. I'm going to blame Matthew for this one, I think. He lost them. It's a little, the little vampire guy. So I got like this guy from Underworlds to act as like a stand in for them. He's got his like little honor guard in this case, but instead of being two models, it's one really powerful little vampire companion. Viracos, I think it's called the Bloodborne. The Viracos Bloodborne. That's him. He's the very Bloodborne. And I got all my zombies deployed here with the corpse cart. Zombies, I'm using, again, I put them in the other video. People are like, whoa, what are those? These are Grey Matter Gaming. <laughs> Magnetic boom trays. Here's the guy from Grey Matter Gaming. It's Andy. He's the one who provided them. It was kind of the whole idea. It was, um, they excel at allowing you to quickly take your models from wherever they're stored or in a carrying case that's magnetic and put them right on the table because they themselves are magnetized. So like, well, that's fogged up because I put glue on like an idiot, but the, you can take them off easily, you can pick them up easily. You know, they're easy to take off the things and move around. These ones are spread out on uh, like, a, like a more spread coherency. Whereas I got some examples over here of much tighter coherency. So you can do five wide. And you could do, yeah, these ones are just washers. So they're, yep. they themselves aren't even magnetized. They're just magnetized yep. to the actual. Yep, just ferrous washers will work. Yeah, movement tray itself. And then you obviously have the tighter coherency here. We got yep. the, the 10 this guys. Like the 10 man. So. Yep. Yeah, so you do the blizzard. There we go. Yeah, <laughs> you got the, uh, the Dairy Queen. Yep. So these excel at, uh, if you have a carrying case and you'd like to magnetize your models, 
uh, to essentially baking sheets in a lot of ways too. Yep. Uh, these, and you, and you like to play with movement trays afterwards, this cuts out that take out of the carrying case put it onto a movement tray because you simply just take the movement tray and put it in a case and then take it out of the case. And again, the other thing is they're very low profile, so they're thin. Uh, you can't really see them, right? They're just underneath the models, so yeah. If you guys are curious to check them out, it will be in the description down below, just like the battle mat. So, providing a lot of gaming accoutrements, accessories for wargaming. Yep, wargaming accessories. Our, our goal is to make your gaming easier and better so you can kill each other funner. Yeah, <laughs> just get right to the action a lot quicker without all the, the, the nonsense of deploying. For myself, it makes it taking them from, from here to the B roll, from the shelf to the B roll room, back in here and on the table quickly. And then afterwards, I take them off the base and move them around. But the whole process of getting to this point, they speed it up quite a bit. So I appreciate it. And I have to do the same to. Um, I just, I've only magnetized the zombies of the Undead Collection. I haven't done the Graveguard of the Skeletons yet myself, but I mean, I'll get there <laughs> one day, one day soon. I got my Mortis Engine, my Dire Wolves. I got my White King, my Vampire Lord over there. Again, just using some Underworld Vampire Lords. I think the uh, Underworld team is so freaking cool, even though the models are technically on smaller bases. I try to account for that where I can, but in the end, I also don't really care. I, the models are so cool that I can't really... Like, they're, I, they're beautiful. I like the new Vampire Lord model. I got no problem with it, but I like the, the, the variety of vampires in the yeah. list. Not all vampires are the flowing red hair on, the, on the, the rock guy. That guy's got a great weapon. How cool is that? Anyways, what do we got on this side for deployment? So, starting over there, we got our catapult hiding out behind there. Um, our unit of 18 giant rats with the master molder behind. Bell number one with screen of rats in front of it, another catapult. We got our acolytes biding their time with the bombardier, so they'll be ready to hopefully jump on somebody at some point. Second bell with the general gracier with another screen of clan rats up in front. You got three graciers in this list. I got three graciers, so I'm three claw stepping ahead, right? So I got yeah, that. That's true. Right? And that helps with my grand strategy because I have to keep. Uh, the Grey Seers and the Bombardier. I have to have, I think, two of them alive at two the end of the Two out of the four? Yep. Oh, that's not bad. Okay, so okay. it's doable. Third catapult over here with everybody's favorite, the Hell Pit. Mr. Hell Pit Abomination. Well, then tunneling by himself is uh, the Warp Grinder. Not even so, with the Acolytes. They're just on their own. Uh, not, yeah, he's by himself. So Acolytes, have they have a nine-inch range. Oh, they're only so, nine-inch range? I thought they were longer. So they okay. have a short range, so he'll pop up at some point to contest objectives or help with an easy battle tactic to, um, what's the one, uh, the one where you take the table edges. Surround right? and destroy. Surround and destroy, so he'll help with that for an easy 60 points. All right, fair enough. And that should be about that. We are ready to start this game. I get to dictate who will go first. This is, I've been humming and hawing about this element of the game. I'd like to see them adjust it in the new edition. I don't like to see the players have that much control. Now, granted, I know a lot of you probably really do like that element of it, but it is kind of nice going to a game not knowing how it's going to start. Mm -hmm. And that gives the priority mechanic even a little bit more... Ah, uh, like, I don't... I can't think of the exact word I want to use here, but it feel, it'll it'll make a little bit more sense in the game, yeah. I think, technically, yes. Yep. If if the rest of the battle rounds are random, you might as well make the first one a little random as well. Or, or adjust how it's currently approached i don't like the whole undead could be kind of nasty for it too but like i'm gonna go i'm gonna go second i want to go second that way when you shoot me i can recuperate some of the damage and then have a full turn kind of thing right mm -hmm. yeah that's the idea unless i lose so much that i'm punished for but i hope that's hopefully that dream. won't be the case hopefully it's not the case <laughs> the, the dream is the three catapults do some damage 2d6 damage can uh knock some holes there it could absolutely do a, a record amount of damage we're gonna we're gonna find out though we're gonna find out because we are gonna opt to go second we are gonna let the skaven take the first turn of this game and i'll play a reactionary game off the rip and we'll see how that goes for me so good luck to you and your skaven forces there andy good luck to the zombies well thank you very much they're gonna need it <laughs> just play clock catapults and they don't like those Let's go ahead and do Primal Magic Dice. I'm going to contribute nothing to this pool, and so are you. <laughs> no Primal Magic right away. And as we go into it, I want to show you how I'll be keeping... And as we go into it, I want to show you all how I'll be keeping track of the score here. I do it every game, so if it's a little redundant, I do apologize. But for new viewers, I use the D10s here to keep track of the score per battle round. I'll be player one, Andy will be player two on the right. Command points, 
left and right there. And then this is available over at the Forge if you like what you see. It comes in many different forms. You can just buy the STL if you have printers of your own. You can print them in color. They're all made to order as well. You can or buy them as they are. You can get them in any color combination, any design. You can get them just plastic so you can paint it yourself, do whatever you want with it. I go battle around one, two, three, four, five, out of the total at the end for the win. Also works for 40K. Top 10 will be primaries, middle ones will be secondaries, and you can use these for tertiaries or painted army bonus. It is up to you. All available again at the Forge. For battle tactic on the Skaven side, we are gonna go with Magical Dominance, which is get a spell off, and I cannot deny it. And that Grace here, who was deployed up there, is actually magically gonna be back here instead of outside of my uh, <laughs> deny range. I, I joking, I make light jokes of it because it literally doesn't matter at all. Uh, Andy had all of his drops after me, and if you want to meticulously take the time to play to Sigmar, which is definitely a game you could do, uh, and you know, spend your entire evening making sure every little play you do is perfect, you can go for it, or you can just let your opponent correct little things that alter the game, not at all. So in this case, this is where it would logically be deployed, and that's where he's gonna go ahead and do his battle tactic. What would they do for your heroic action? I'm going to do heroic leadership on this bell. That bell right there, excellent. A four. I got it. Do I want to do anything? Hmm. I also probably want to just go leadership. So I will on the Necromancer, I guess. Why not? Hey, we got it. Excellent. I noticed that weirdly the Virkos Dynasty heroic actions are on your hero face as opposed to some of the other ones. So it's very, you <laughs> gotta, gotta be careful with that book. There's a lot of like little tiny words that are very important on everything. I love it and hate it. I to pick one of my Antorian Locuses to be an especially better wizard. I'm gonna choose this Vampire Lord who can cast and unbind two spells this battle round. So, his first spell, he will do Skitter Leap. Everybody's right. favorite. It, oh, you got it! I'm gonna take that on an 11. Right. Effectively just doing it to cast a spell. Yep, I wanna make sure I get my battle tactic. Yep, that could've um, been any spell, it just doesn't really matter as too much. And so, now I will try to bring out the bell. Bell, boom. And I get to re-roll that because he is a master of magic. He is the commander with the master of magic. Absolutely, it'd be crazy not to bring out a grace. And here. he's got it. With a sip, we got it with a six. We're setting that bell up somewhere around here. We're gonna figure that out in a second. Boom, setting it up right there and then realizing that we're summoning a bell, we probably should have rung the bells on the actual, uh, wait, don't tell me what they are. I know exactly what they are. They are a grace here on a, Screaming bell. The screaming bell. Oh my gosh, screaming how did I bell. forget that? We have to, at the start of, is it just your hero phase? It's at the start of your hero phase, so it would only be my hero phase I ring it. I'm gonna roll them up. All right. All right, here's will be the first one. On a two, unholy clamor, they get to move an extra six inches for the bell. Wow. Also, like this turn? Yeah. Okay, so extra movement the, on that one. Not the, bad. The, the bells are, effects are generally underwhelming. Okay. <laughs> so here's the second one. Six. A six, Ooh. apocalyptic doom. Oh! At the end of the hero phase, roll the dice for each enemy unit within 13 inches for oh. any friendly screaming bells that rolled this result. And on a four up, you suffer D3 mortal wounds. Well, so that won't be relevant, I suppose. Nope. And so then this one's going to move further. It gets an extra six inches. And uh, that's it for my bells. Uh, then at the end of the hero phase, this thing moves. Yep, this Boop. guy will move and he'll just pop up there. And then it also has the bell ringing mechanic at the end of the hero phase. We've got to roll four. Yep. Which is going to be... On a 13 is bad. Nope. Uh, we're good with a 10. All right. Does, uh, 13 is the only result that matters? Yep. Gotcha. All right. Well then, otherwise has a... It makes you immune to battle shock, like I mentioned, and it reduces... It messes with my bravery. But what happens if you roll a 13? On a 13, I think it does D3 mortals in a 13-inch bubble to, to everything. Including escape. Gotcha. And then it's removed from play. Ooh, I see. Okay, well, with that in mind, I think we're done the hero phase now, so we can go ahead and move everything, and this thing's gonna get an extra six inches of movement, and we're gonna go forward, and, oh, what were we gonna I say? I forgot. Oh. Uh, start of the game, warp spark tokens for that little guy. Oh, he's a scryer, you got a scryer guy. Wouldn't have mattered yet, so might as well get it out, so I get six. And for, for anyone who's curious, scryer stuff that lets you essentially reroll casting rolls. It lets you mess with the damage of your... It lets you mess with scryer things. In this case, mostly him. I, don't, I assume the catapults don't count as scryer nope. units. Nope. It's only basically him and the acolytes. Oh, the acolytes are pretty spicy. That's really good. So that'll yeah. turn the damage to D3 plus one yes. with that. And it helps him with rerolling uh, more and more warp power potentially. Yeah. Okay. Um, so has some uses. I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, we're going to go ahead and move these guys, but I'm going to point out why I'm a double idiot. It says he's got companions of two Virko's Bloodborne. And I remember there was models that came with the, the Cursed City. I'm like, I can't find them. I need to look with my eyes. There's literally the two Virko's <laughs> Bloodborne on his base. 
Uh, for everyone who is making fun of me in the comments, you are justified. <laughs> so we'll be right back once these scaven are done. It's like to humble myself from here and here to time to time, here and there. So everything is done moving, nothing too fancy happened. We did whip these guys in the movement phase. That's a molder thing. Uh, that gives them plus one to wound rolls in melee, as well as uh, bonuses to charging. Not that they're going to be charging right now. Nope. And nothing of yours ran? Nothing ran. I am uh, no keeping, sticky muds. Keeping sure footing as I go through this forest. Focused and clear is your movement. The help hit over there. Uh, he has a random move characteristic of two d six. So we got a six there. That's how far he moved this turn. The plague claws just moved a wee bit. And then the gracier. I love that model, by the way. Yeah. That gracier who was back here just moved forward. And uh, that's, we're and good that's to shooting. Pretty much it. On to launching some catapults. Uh, which of these two do? You, oh, which of these three do you want to start with? I'm gonna start with this one. Boop. So this is the one, we're going to actually come to this one next. This is the one we're going to start with. So and uh, right over here, onto those skeletons. I am, you have 10 or more models, so I am on a two up to hit. One the, shot. Um, what's the rend of it? Uh, rend two. How much damage is it? 2d6, because you are over 10 models. I am going to just, uh, it gives me a, it's only one shot that only is 2d6. Only one shot. I'm not going to do anything then. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it hits. So it hits, and... It does oh not wound. Oh my gosh, okay. So that is the beauty of catapults. So, um, this guy is now going to... Uh, We're going to target the graveyard there. So it's going to go over this onto the graveyard. And again, twos by twos. Two to hit. I hey. hit. And does it actually hurt them? Yes! It does. It does. So it goes, two rent. Goes right through their armor. Goes right through. So 2d6 damage. There's only 20 of them. And nice. a whopping three. <laughs> they do have a ward save, but they're near the phylactery on my vampire lord. He gives him a five up ward save. Didn't matter. Two die. Let's just lose a random catapult hit him. Let's just lose a random amount. Boom, boom. Those two die. Yeah, our artillery could be kind of iffy. That could have just killed 12 graveyard. Yeah. <laughs> so this one's going to try to do better luck on the zombies. Again, twos by twos. Two to hit. Hit. And wound. Right to the two. damage. 2d6. Five Hi. zombies. Ooh. Well, they have no other defenses other than their ward save built in. And we lose three of the zombies. Let's lose the most random three. One, two, three. There we go. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> that will conclude your turn. I, oh, I do have to take... That reduces it by two? It reduces... You count as two additional casualties. So they could fail on a six. They don't. And then I guess I could have inspired them. Uh, and then... Can't fail over there. All right. Oh, I forget that the bandits of me reroll wards of one. I didn't roll any ones, but good to know for later. Good to remember. Good to remember. Okay, that is it. So you are going to be on one objective, two objectives. Not more than me, though. Oh, three objectives, but not more than Still me. Still not more yeah. than you. I forgot there's three, six objectives <laughs> in this game. Uh, no runs, no charges, so no mortal wounds. That is going to be four victory points for the Skaven on that first turn. Here we are, turn one for me. Ah, I gotta find a battle tactic I feel like doing right now. We're gonna attempt magical dominance of our own. It's a little risky, but all the other battle tactics with this kind of territory deployment and what I have in my army are a little suspect. So, primal magic dice, I'll contribute none to the pool. And Andy is gonna help out with one on both of us. Okay, okay. Well, I have to get all of the spells I wish to cast Good to go. So, we're gonna start this off with, ooh, probably a Spirit Gale is one of my best bets. I suppose I could pick a heroic action to do. I'm gonna go with the Virkos one, Pack Alpha. I'm gonna pick a summonable Deadwalker unit, boom, the Dire Wolves, and it just adds D3 models to the unit above their starting strength. So I get two more Dire Wolves in that unit. Definitely feels like a weird action, but we'll put them up front. Hey, so many more. Dire wolves to the table. What would you like to do for an action? I'm just going to do a heroic leadership on that bell. All right, fair. Four up. You don't I do it. not get it. Then I will continue with... Uh, I'm going to do my deathly invocations now, I suppose. Uh, they're all set up holding than 12 of the Necromancer, so he's going to target them. And then the Graveguard are going to be targeted as well. They just get three models back. Plus one, but they're only missing three. It cannot bring them over their starting strength. So... With that in mind, let's just go ahead and have these, because I'm lazy, right back on the movement <laughs> trays. Right back where you died. Right where you died, it makes the most sense. You come back up there. Yes, thank you, catapults. 
Uh, boo, boo, boo. This oh. is, I was hoping you didn't do super, super well with your shooting. That way I could just uh, mitigate it with the healing. Always worth their value. <laughs> Always. Yes. I mean, sometimes they can be. Sometimes they'll, they'll wipe out units. Uh, we're going to have the White King at the beginning. I forget his abilities at the beginning of the hero phase, the Lord of Shambling Bones. He picks a Death Rattle unit, in this case, either the Skeletons or the Grave Guard, and they get every six to hit is two hits. Okay. Because it probably won't matter on the Grave Guard, I'm going to put that on the Skeletons. And I'll go for some spell casting. I'm going to start with the Vampire Lord and a Spirit Gale on him. Uh, throwing two dice at this. Hope, oh. oh. <laughs> that guy did. I'm doing it to you again, dude. I'm just, I, I'm going to throw a Primal Magic die at so I was about to say. Can't, oh my oh. god, I just triple six it. It goes off. So it's six of your units take a mortal wound because I got the big version of Spirit Yes, Gale. you did. Can you believe this used to be your entire army took two mortal wounds? That was, it was crazy. <laughs> it was crazy before. Okay, let's go with Clan Rats, Clan Rats, Acolytes. Uh, that's three. Uh, I guess Giant Rats will be four. All, all it is is just like a storm of spirits above the battlefield, and they're flying down and just attacking the enemy army. And, uh, well, the Graciers can pass wounds off and stuff, I guess. They have ward saves on the Screaming Skull catapults. I mean, the, um, the Screaming Bells. Four units. Uh... I guess I will do... I'm going to leave the help it alone because you can ignore it on a 4-up, I believe. Let's do the... Both the Screaming Skulls. Uh, both the uh, yeah, the Screaming Bells. They have five aboards, but I can't think of any... I can't pick the same unit more than once, so I'd love to just hit the Acolytes over and over and over again. <laughs> All right. Uh, ward save on the bell. I'm not going to try to shrug it, so I actually want some damage on the bell because oh. I want to bring out Vermin Lords. So I'm not going to shrug it. Okay, fair. So five up on this bell. Boop. Uh, he saved it. This one, uh, this one takes a wound. All right, there you go. I'm not gonna bother casting any spells, even though he has the blessing of the season of war to do it. I'd rather just uh, get the battle tactic and consider myself lucky that I got the yeah. uh, irresistible force on it. And I did cast a spell near the Mortis engine, so I have to keep track of that. Every time I cast a spell near it, uh, it stores the energy of it up to six throughout the game, and then once per game, I can choose to unleash all that stored up necromantic energy and just hit the field for that many mortal wounds, up to, up to six. Effectively, every enemy within range takes six mortal wounds as the game progresses. Ooh, but the other thing I didn't realize about the Reliquary counter is that it's every time you unbind magic or dispel an endless spell. So I'm gonna go ahead and dis I'm gonna use a second cast to unbind the bell over there, which I forgot about. Technically should have done it a little bit e earlier, but it don't matter too much. The Necromancer will try after that, but this guy's gonna try first because uh, we want this guy to get the uh, buff. Oh, it's a fail. Uh, not much I can do about that, I think. So we're gonna have this guy attempt to dispel it because he's not casting anything. A six? It is a five. All right, well, we got rid of that, but unfortunately, I think he's too far away to actually give to help him out. Never mind, he is holy within 12, so that will store this up to two. Look at that, accidental success, my favorite kind. I, I'm a triple idiot. I, there's no <laughs> range of the wizard having to do that. Just any time one of my wizards does it, it gets a counter. Hey, undead. Uh, that's going to be it. We're going to go to the movement phase. Do I want things to run? I don't really need them to run, so I won't bother with it. I'm, I guess I'll just recklessly charge with these wolves in combat to chew up some rats, I guess. We'll trade wolves for rats, and then I'll lose my wolves to acolytes, I guess. <laughs> the dire wolves rush forward. No, no redeploys, I assume? Nope. I am then going to move the rest of my forces slowly behind it. No runs. I don't want mortal wounds. Ah, I kind of want to run the zombies, though. I'm going to run the zombies. I'm going to at the double the zombies. They come back. And they are going to suffer. Uh, we're going to lose two of them into the mud. Well, maybe. we got deathless minions, I guess. Nope. Two of them die in the mud. Oh. <laughs> just moving up to there with the 10-inch move. Uh, again, lost the two zombies in the back. Making it so I can just move the corpse card up a little bit. Get this guy out of the way there. Just so I get the corpse card up here to keep it holy within 12 of the unit to buff them. And uh, the necromancer are moved forward. The rest of the stuff, I'm just going to trundle forward a little bit. Even Radicar, I don't want him running and taking mortal wounds. Radicar the Beast, even though he can run and charge, does not want to tempt the bad weather. So he will not be doing so. <laughs> the Mortis Engine moved up. And then we moved everything else to stay within 12 of it on this side of the battlefield. So we're not really overcoming the skeletons. Uh, keeping the Vampire holy within 9 of all this stuff. And the White King right there. We're staying near this uh, novel no. to prevent it from utilizing its ability for now. For now. I have no shooting because nothing is near the Mortis engine. Uh, the only charge I have are the Dire Wolves, which not in love with the idea of them charging in, but I can't resist going for Clan Rats, so we're going to see what we get here. 
I don't roll any ones, so we're good to go six. Charge again to the front ranks of both the clan rats, and uh, would you like to unleash hell with some accolades? I am going to unleash hell. All right. So I couldn't mitigate as much as I would have liked, but I guess I could have these guys not really fully commit to a charge. I might mitigate some of the shots. Compile in a little bit. Yeah. Those pile in, because they pile in six. So I suppose this is the first model that I moved in. So let's have these guys all back up a little bit. We'll just cheat live. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, whatever, something like this. Try to mitigate as much of the only shells as I can. Yeah. yeah. I can just stop the only shell, I guess, with that charge. And then the dire will just pile in further when they yep. go to fight. So that's pretty much it for charging. I'm going to go right to fighting. I'm going to pile in the dogs. Pile in like that. We've got the three in the back rank just keeping coherency and not really fighting. These two are going to attack this unit of clan rats. The other three, six, seven are attacking that unit of clan rats. Of the two attacking the one unit, we have three hits, two attacks per dog. And they gnaw one of the rats away. But it's only one moon, no rend. All right, five up. Oh, I good. I saved it. That, that rat put his shield up and lived. <laughs> and then, what did I say, eight? So uh, those two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Only seven. And I'll do all out defense on these guys. Hold! Doom Wolf will give me 14, sorry, 15 attacks. That is a great roll. Good job, Dire Wolves. Look at them go. And boom. All right, uh, they are unrelenting. That is five when he hits. Four ups, though. Four saves. Four ups. I get two, two go through. of the rats, and you may fight back with all of your rats. I will bay at the moon with the Doom Wolf for an all of defense here. <laughs> Same idea, I don't really care about the offense of them. They're more or less there to gum things up and be dogs. 18 attacks from this first one. So this is my dream Warhammer game. It's just our <laughs> idiots that hit on force and wound on force fighting in the middle of the table. There we go. And I hope it never ends. All right, end a wound. Okay. Three. So far, three. No. Nope. Firewolves have a five up base. We take two, and we ward neither. That is a dead dog. This one oh, it goes down. And then we have those clan rats. Yeah, I just got six of them. A couple of more because they get the extra reach with their unit size. So. Fours. Fours and fours all the same, though. Deadly. Look at Deadly that half rats. hit. Perfectly average. And can you believe there was two wounds? Two. Oh, no. Oh, My another dog. dead dog. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, you yeah. got him. That's not cool, dude. Boom. You lost two <laughs> dogs. All right. Uh, I guess I will. I'll just leave the older dire wolves in there. Firing presence on them. They still lost one from the spell at the beginning yeah. of the game. The bravery five. Yep. So <laughs> two, one more run. So they still. That's okay. They'll be coming back probably. True. Yeah, they get D three back at the end, at right? At the end. Yep. And, and then, then the giant rats also. I think they're only bravery four. Lost one. So I'll be losing another two. This, this one. Ah, oh, you only lost one, I think. Oh, yep, yep, yep. I only lost one. So, so if they're brave four, only one, right? And then the acolytes the took Acolytes a as well. Bravery four. Do they lose Ooh. two more? Two run there. Boom, boom, spear, gale, everyone. Very fun interactive spell. And then I get clan rats come back. Yep. End of the battle shock phase. D3 clan rats over here. So that smaller unit. Oh, or, they're back to full. They're back to full. And then this unit that actually took damage, they get two back. All right. Got two coming back over here and then two coming back over there. Just rallying back to the clan rat units. That's what they do. Yep. Uh, that'll be the end of my turn. I will also gain four victory points for magical dominance and standing on objectives. I'll just get lucky. I just got lucky with my triple six cast earlier. Uh, acquired me two VPs. Because the other battle tactics would have been kind of difficult. Anyways, uh, we're going to roll priority for the second turn here. Boop. I got a six. Six. I got a six too. Ooh, you decide who goes next. Oh. I'll let you think about it. What's uh? What are you thinking? So I'm gonna take it. I so Skaven turn two. Skaven turn two. Perfect. Let's just do the primal magic dice. Get out of the way now, so we don't forget. We get one each. Yep, one. Just an update on the score. Tie game. Three to two command points as we go to the second battle round. We both have one primal magic die each. Choose from my vampire lord amongst all the undead there to gain the ability to cast, unbind, and dispel an additional spell this battle round. So as we go to your turn here, what are you thinking for the battle tactic? We're going to do bait and trap with the clan rats. I so. don't think you could have a better unit in an army that's meant for that battle tag. Well, there might be, but it's perfect for clan rats. They can literally retreat and charge as their, that's their banner that does yep. that. And you just need two units to retreat and two units to charge. So you can just kind of make a little bit of wiggle room for them to retreat. Yeah, and then you can charge back in. You don't want to overcommit on it because I could redeploy and make one of them a little bit harder. But that's you have but other units to charge I've with. Even and even if yeah. I kill them with the acolytes, I got my hell pit over here. I have my giant rats. I, I got options for other charges. It's if an I easy to. one, I think. So yeah. we'll go with that. What do you want to do for your action? Heroic leadership on that bell. My bell is gonna get a three. No, and will not get anything. Uh, I'm gonna try. 
I don't think I need to do any. I don't need. I'm gonna try willpower on that guy because we have a lot of like each of these graciers cast two spells, right? Yep. Oh, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna definitely go willpower on the uh, white king over there. The actual. And that reminds me because we gotta ring these two screaming bells right now as well. We're gonna roll the d6s, and so we'll do this one first. That one first. A one. Oh. That's always great. Magical backlash. D3 mortal wounds that cannot be negated. Okay, so no protection of the great horned rat. You can reroll that if you want. Not fully flat. It's a pity reroll. Right. Okay, got the same uh, thing. So I get three <laughs> wounds on that guy. Everyone gets a few pity rerolls when things go bad. And this one? Uh, hey! <laughs> Let's see, come on, more damage. Awesome, uh, rats. A... Two mortal wounds. Dude, they just took five mortal wounds. Five mortal wounds, so both of them are down to 12 wounds left. They have some way to summon a verm like a vermin lord. I don't mechanically know how it works. So you have to take count the number of wounds that they've suffered Add roll a d6, and then if that number is greater than a 13. If it, what if it's equal to 13? I think it's equal to or greater. We'll okay. double check. I think equal to or greater than a 13, you get a vermin lord. And when do you trigger that? Is it whenever you ring the bell? I think you can choose when you ring a bell. You can do this one instead. I'll, we'll double check uh, the actual timing of it. All right, it. fair. So we could but, potentially have two. It's hard to hit, but you have to have the right amount of wounds on you, and you have to. Like, so you have to be pretty low on wounds and roll high on the d6 ish. Uh, or be real high on the d6, be at your middling wounds, but there would be vermin lords. We just read it, it's a cool mechanic, so you, uh, you're de the Gracier is deciding to shatter the bell in an attempt to summon a vermin lord. So you can do the Peel of Doom first, which is the d6 roll, and then you can, but you might, it might be risky because you might take the mortal wounds on the one <laughs> yes, right. and get destroyed. The way it works is as long as you have seven or more wounds allocated to it at the start of your hero phase, you can attempt to shatter the bell. If you roll a 13 or more, by rolling a d6 and adding the current amount of wounds allocated to it, you'll hit a, you'll, you shatter the bell and you summon a vermin lord. Otherwise, you just shatter the bell and nothing bad happens, and you lose like you lose the, uh, the whole, yeah. the whole it's contraption. Gone. Yeah, it's kind of cool. I like it. Very scaven. We're gonna attempt to skitter leap from this grace here. From this gray, from the bell onto that grace here. I get plus two to cast for this. Boom, boom, boom. What's the plus two from? Uh, from the bell itself. Oh, the bell just gets the plus bell two. itself gets plus two to casting as long as I've suffered. No oh. more than zero to six. Gotcha. All right, so you got a six. So that on goes that. off on a six. Mm. All right. Mm. Try and stop this. I will go with the necromancer. I need to show seven. Oh, how about a one and a two? No pity rerolls for me. Uh, you can have it. All right. Ooh, this is getting eerie over here. I need you to. I'm worried about a warp lightning vortex, which is what's going to probably be. As well, you should be. Yeah. Warp lightning storm. So that 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 bell can cast another spell. Yep. If it wants to. So the bell has another spell, but I'm going to jump right over here. Right over this guy. And he's going to do the Warp Lightning Vortex. He's got a reroll. He's a Master of Magic. This is your general, eh? This is my general. So you're risking his position. Well, mm. he'll be able to jump back in at oh, the end of the true. movement phase. Yeah, shenanigans, not whole shenanigans. Because this just keeps it from coming through. Yes. It does not keep me from going back in. I like it. Da! Well, that'll be a 12 with the... Yeah. Plus one from the knot hole. You might have to be within an inch, but you could just get within an inch, I guess, if you wanted to, going back there. Uh, all the same? Would you like to add a primal magic dice to it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, primal no, magic. No primal here. magic dice. So. I, was, I was trying to stop this with a vampire. Oh, no, I should have added a primal dice. I will. I stop and it. And you stop it. No vortex, of, no nasty vortex. But you have primal magic dice still. This goes up to three. Ta da! The magic. He will then do wither because <laughs> why not? He's why? already over here. What um, else is he gonna do? So here? he's gonna wither on the skeletons. All right, bring it on. Bloop. Uh, 10, 11. 11. And you could reroll it. Uh, this is D3 mortal wounds and what? D3 mortal wounds and minus one to hit for attack rolls yeah. until my next hero phase. Yeah. They have this one, I suppose. I can't, that's a pretty good roll. I'm gonna do the hypothetical stop though. No, I wouldn't have stopped it. Okay, uh, D3 more wounds, roll uh, it up. First, I have to roll greater than your wounds characteristic. Okay, well, which, that's... Hey. On two dice? I got it, <laughs> I got it. Um, and then you take D3 mortals. All right. Three mortals. I got the phylactery nearby, so it didn't help. I take two mortals. Oh, I get to roll the one, sorry. Banner. Oh, it helped. There you go. I lose one skeleton. We're gonna lose you. Uh, we're gonna be minus one to hit. So we got this grace here finished. As we come to this side of the battlefield, we still have one, two, three, four more spells to cast. I move on to this grace here on the bell, doing Crack's Call from the bell onto these zombies. So this needs a six, and I'm plus two to cast from the bell. So that'll be a nine, ten, eleven. All 
right. It's a pretty good roll, I'll let you have it. So what are we doing here, Andy? So we roll 2d6 and you subtract out your movement characteristic oh. and then you take the difference. Nice. So your movement four. Yeah. So not, so you take five mortal wounds. Five mortal wounds, all right. Five mortal wounds it is. We ward one of them. We're gonna lose four of our zombies. We got a few lagging in the back here who, it's like a, it's essentially summoning a fissure. Yep. Uh, we'll have to, my coherence is a little borked, so I'll keep that guy where he was and lose two over here instead, I guess. Hey. And that is, this one, can you do one more spell if it wants to? Yep, so he has one more spell and he has one more spell. And you have the bombardier. He's going to bring out the, or try to bring out the, the Bell of Doom with a 7, 8, 9. 9, eh? So you have two more casts after this. I have two more on vines. I will try and stop this one, I suppose. I do you got a nine, I got a nine, so no. And the bell summons on top of the rock. And then we have one more spell from this grace here and one more from the bombardier. This one will do mystic shield. Ooh, makes sense. With plus two. On a six, seven, eight. Try and still, what, what does this bombardier know? Uh, he has more and more warp power. That's really what. Okay, yeah, fair. Uh, that, oh, that's good for the more acolytes. More warp power on the acolytes. That's plus one to hit and wound? Yeah. All right, I'll let you get this mystic shield off then. We're gonna do, uh, this unit is holier than 12, so we can get a mystic shield. Then the more, more more warp power. Here we go. Boom. Seven? Seven. I can re-roll it with the warp spark tokens, but I'm gonna keep it because it's going yeah. off. Yeah, because the vampire tried to stop Skitter Leap, he stopped the Vortex. This Necromancer tried to stop Um I guess. Did I try and stop anything with it? All the same, I have at least one more dispel for it. Oh, I tried to stop that, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then I have the White King to try and stop this with willpower. He does not, so you are going to get... More, uh, more war power. So that does do more wounds to them later, I believe. Yes. Uh, but for now, it gives them plus one hit and wound. Yep. All right. That's it for the hero phase. The bell is going to move around. Whoop. Oop. And then we're going to roll to see if we get a 13 or not. That's it. Can we get a 13 on three dice? No. A 10. Go right to the movement phase. Gotta, oh, God, yeah, sorry, we got to make room to recharge. So i got to reposition these guys back. So so we're going to summarize this a little bit. We're going to move the Acolytes back. Yep. And we're going to retreat with these two units. Yep. And then we'll show you where they end up. The Acolytes back up, they back up, and they back up. So everything's retreated. I am going to try to redeploy the dogs uh, to circumvent some of those uh, Acolyte bombs, which are super nasty. Yep. Uh, the the Doom Wolf howls at the moon, and we move one, one inch. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to not bother to. I'm just going to... Yeah, we're good. We're good. You can you can still avoid some. I mean, one inch is... Ah, uh, true, I suppose. On closer inspection, I will mitigate none of the damage if I do anything. So we're just going to stay exactly where we are. And, uh, well, that's what they get for rolling one. No, the health it cranks an 11-inch move. Hello, big boy. <laughs> Does this thing want to hop back into the uh, knot hole problem? That'll be at the end of the movement All phase, right, but fair. yes, he will. Forgot to mention it, but we're going to whip the giant rats over here, and they're going to move up towards the wall. And... Uh, that's uh, pretty much it. All right, shooting time. And then, yeah, the grace here jumps into the mm -hmm. knot hole and p pops out mm -hmm. uh, here or there. It's up to you, really. Boom, over there. Yes. I like the mobility of that. Skitter leaping and then going back into the knot hole is hilarious. Gabe were actually one of the main offenders as to why uh, Merciless Blizzard was eroded to uh, <laughs> not be able to, you know, skitter leap Merciless Blizzard, then go, or even Dreaded Skitter Leap away or whatever, yep. right? But you had like two different options to do it. Dreaded Skitter Leap got you within six, so you, you it's hard to even screen out a unit That's farther right. back. Yeah, so Dreaded Skitter Leap, and then Blizzard, and then you just Skitter Leap yourself out of there. Yep. yep. And you're a Gracier, so you have like so much magic capability. <laughs> Skaven's, always a problem, man. It's always Skaven. All right, we'll start with the Acolyte shooting into the dogs. I will use the Warp Spark token, so plus one to hit, plus one to wound from more and more Warp Power, right. and plus one damage onto actually both of them. I get to pick D3 units, so let me make sure I, I can. It's just th I believe it's just three. Oh, all right, well. You got three anyways, yep. Yeah. But it'll be on the Bombardier himself and the Acolytes are plus one damage. So that means the Bombardier's rocket's going to be four damage a shot, and yep. then the Acolytes are D3 plus one. That's real spicy. Uh, do you want to roll the effect? I know it's at the end of the phase when you want to roll the Warp Spark token effect now. Okay, yep. yeah. On a one, it would have ill effects on him at the end of the phase, and he would suffer D3 mortal wounds, because it's not always good to eat the rocks, kids. We are then going to immediately throw a volley of the globes into the direwolves. I'm not going to bother trying to save them here. I'm going to save the command point. Roll over here. What are they hitting on? They are now twos by twos. Oh, spooky. <laughs> Oh, none of them miss. None of them miss. One of them needed the help of the magic power. <laughs> That's how good the roll was. Only one mattered. And two's to wound. 
because it's normally threes. Okay, that one mattered a little bit more. That, we have mini wounds. You it have looks nine. Like Ren two. Ren two. Do a hypothetical oh, roll yeah, yeah. in case I had the, see if I, okay, I would have wasted the command point. I would have had a six up. Just curious what branches the game can take as you play it, right? D3 plus one, two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And then these are all 16, fours. 16, yeah. 20, 24, 28 damage. That's fair, yep, yep, yep. So here is 10 out of the 30 effectively, so no wards made there. So that's five dead dogs. Uh, and then there's the rest dead. Oh, there's a couple extra dogs in there, but uh, whatever. I still have to do eight more ward saves, it's not worth it. They all die to the globes, which I expected. I expected that. Yeah, you knew all these room for activities we have in the middle now. Oh, this fence got knocked around a little bit. Ooh, look at that. All right, well, that means we get the catapults to fire. We'll start with this one, because it's tar- Well, it's got some targets, but the zombies are the best one for zombies it. Zombies are where they're going. Two- I'll oh, hit off target a little bit. There we go. <laughs> and All then right. we have this catapult. What He's are we He's gonna go into the graveyard. Into the graveyard, hits. Hits. Wounds. Ooh, 2d6 damage. Oh, seven. seven. Five of ward save. Ooh, we rolled this one, so we're gonna lose six. We're losing six. I'll lose from the back here. Two, four. It landed near this mortis engine. That's what's up. Five and oh, as the musician, keep him there. Ah, oh, whatever. I can just bring him back. I don't care. <laughs> bam, bam, bam. And then, yeah, six dead. Then we have the other one firing into them. Same thing. Same idea. Hit. Ooh, zoned in. Two d six damage. All four. four. Wards. Ooh, reroll for the banner. I kind of want to lose a couple. There we go. I wanted to lose a couple more. Gives me options on a battle tactic. Uh, okay. Lose a couple more. The fake, ch the seneschal, and then this guy. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, the last thing that could fire is the bombardier behind that rock there, but he doesn't have the range anymore. He would have been clean up for the wolves. Yep. If the acolytes didn't do their thing. Okay. Charging? Charging. Hell pit going in first. The hell pit's going to be an issue. Seven. Welcome. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, hello. Forgot to, did we mention his toughened sinews? I think I mentioned it during this current creation we were talking. I might not have, but he's got the toughened sinews, which gives him four up armor and two more wounds, I think is what it is. Yeah, as opposed to the five up, that's right. I, was, I couldn't remember. I remember his plus one to the save, but I couldn't remember exactly what their save was. Uh, is that it? Uh, do we, well, we rolled the one, one of the ones on there. Yes. Like a six, so he takes yep. D3 mortals. So he'll take D3 mortals. Because he slipped in the mud a little bit. Yep, Ooh. so, you know, he takes three, but he's got a lot. He'll come back. And then, to this side, the giant rats are going to charge to get a, I think it's like a plus, plus two or plus three. I think it's plus three on the charge. Oh, they take oh. D3 mortal wounds. Oh, they also take D3 mortal wounds. <laughs> it's so muddy. Only, only one, though. Only one. One of the little rats gets lost in the mud as he's running forward. All right, we're going to have some uh, rat zombies coming up here in a second, <laughs> I, I hope. So that's two things charged. That's battle tactic complete, which is nice. Would you like to charge anything else, or do you like where you're at? I am going to stay where I'm at. All right, well then, um, Monsters Rampage. Monsters Rampages, they are going to, I, I'm just gonna stomp. All right, stomp away. Your rent's super high on yep. some of the attacks. and so. D3, two, two more. Two potentially dead skeletons. And two dead. About Three that. dead skeletons. Oh, from Wither. That's why I went down. I'm like, I, I'm curious. I don't know how I had yeah. that third one, but I know at some point I did. As we go to combat, I have to test to see if they stand back up. Fours. Oh, we get two of them back. I'll uh, just have them stand up there. But three died for coherency still. Or, sorry, uh, battle shocking. I mean, I, I don't expect to have the unity <laughs> for much longer. Go with the giant rats first. See what these little guys are capable of. See if they can tear down some zombies. I'm sure they have enough attacks to do quite a bit of damage. They have a lot of attacks. They're going to get all out attack from the Master Molder back there. Absolutely. Um, and uh, we'll see how they go. So they're unit size, they're gonna have Ren 2. There's no point in really all their defensing here. Hoping for the best for the zombies. All right, so they're normally fours by fours. Uh, because they were whipped and all out attack, they're threes by threes with Ren 2. All right. And two, threes? Threes to wound. All right. Lucky 13 for the wounding he hits here. 13 ward saves. I am gonna ward. Two of them. That's 11 dead zombies. Well, these five here are gonna die and lash out. I actually want these three in the back to die as well, just so I don't have to worry about them. So those three don't, aren't gonna be less. Eight dead, so I have to pull five more. Uh, I'll just take these five, whatever, don't matter. Whatever guy's piling in anyways. And so that's 10 guys who died that get to lash out. They will drag you down and tear you apart. I will do three more wounds back to you. We'll lose three from that side. Yep. Goodbye, rats. Now I get to go. I'm gonna try and do some damage to this hell pit before he gets me with the skeletons. Now my skeletons are negative one to hit, but they got the Lord of Shambling Bones ability on them. 
Okay, so we pile them in. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen of them attacking. I'm gonna remember the vampire at the start of the combat phase would give them crimson feast, invigorating them, and giving them an extra attack. It'll be twenty-six attacks. Champion's too far in the back there. Fives to hit because of wither. Sixes are good though. So we got that. That's eight hits, nine hits on the first one, and so it's nine. I roll that one. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 hits. Ooh. And threes to wound. All right, so that is going to be minus five. Oh, minus seven. So we have 10 wounding hits at Ren 1 because I outnumber you. I do a five up. Okay, not bad, not bad. That's six damage. So six damage goes through plus the three already suffered. So that's all I got from the skeletons. That hell pit can go have some fun. Seven wounds remaining. Let's see what he's got going for him. He's kind of bracketed, I think. Ah, uh, because he's kind of hurt. What's his rend go down on his mouth attack? Is he two now? His rend on his teeth attack goes down to two. His fist attack goes down to four attacks instead of six. His avalanche of flesh only triggers on four up instead of two up. But it's rerollable because he charged. Yep. So it's still a, a little bit better than a three up. And it's for every model within... Within... Three, I think. Pretty much the whole unit. I'm not going to... Bother with all the defense on them. Yeah, that, just not that guy. <laughs> lucky, lucky guy in the back. I'm not going to bother fixing the pile in. A little overzealous on it. <sighs> no, I'm going to assume that they're going to... If, if they're going to live, they're going to rely on their ward save. There's 18 potential mortal wounds coming their way. Every four up is a mortal wound. However, because you charge, you get to re-roll this. It's like overwhelming bulk of like f bulky flesh or something as he charges in. He's just rolling around on the skeletons yeah. like a giant kitten. It's just like, a lo yeah, overlapping <laughs> fields of flesh all over them. That's 15 mortal wounds. All right. Five up boards for the phylactery. We stayed within nine. Okay, we make, actually, pretty good. Pretty good roll, six of them. So we lose and nine. We roll the ones. Oh, thank you. I forgot. Oh, jeez, thank you. <laughs> Those yeah. were, that banner, holy. So we've lost four, five, six, seven. We made half of those with the reroll. That's not bad. We're definitely going to lose the ones that overextend a little bit. It's kind of the plan. They pop, pile in, they die, and they, <laughs> the ones who pile in die. It's like if you ever played fifth or sixth edition fantasy, this is lapping around. Lapping around was typically always a bad idea, so they took it out of the game. <laughs> six, seven, yep. That's right, that was six. There's seven. Next. All right, we're going to do the gnashing teeth. Which is six attacks, threes by threes. Okay. Uh, just one. one, and that is rent two. Because I, um, I didn't all out defense, so it wouldn't have mattered. How much damage? Two damage? Uh, two damage each. Ward! Uh, okay, two more dead. Let's just lose you and you. Then his final attack is flailing fists. Only four attacks here now. Threes by three. All right. Rend of one? Uh, rend of one. Six up, fail those. Three damage each. Six. Bad, I only have five dice here. Here's all of the roof. So I make two of them. I'm losing three plus, fuck, I'm losing four. We're just gonna lose all of them. One, two, three, four. Okay, well, they actually lived, which is surprising. Usually, well, I got lucky with my hits on you back. I rolled a bunch of sixes. Mitigated his uh, avalanche of flesh. And it's gonna bring me to fighting with the zombies. All right, we piled in our zombies. I got four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen of them attacking back. It's the first hit, fives to hit. Not bad. The hits are what I want. I got four hits. Second volley, because they're two attacks each. Uh all right, eight hits in total. Sorry, seven hits in total. So six, seven. Fours to wound. Sixes are good. Uh we got two wounds and a mortal wound, because it's in addition. Two six of saves. I kill three rats. Alright, that should bring you to the end of the combat phase. I killed three with attacks. One of them is technically a mortal wound from the Locus of Undeath about this, but it kind of like makes it seem like it gives them the vigor of the attack. So I'll just go ahead and assume that that counts. Uh, in this case, I'll get a third zombie in the unit. Well, three zombies will join the unit, but a battle shock is still nasty for them. The rats are sharing a base size with me. I'm going to keep it completely fitting, and they're going to resurrect us. <laughs> I'm going to keep them behind the front line, though, so we can tell which ones are the zombie rats and which ones aren't. So three zombie rats join the rank of the zombies. That's uh, That's it, I guess. We are... Going to battle shock. Battle shock. You start though. It's your turn. Only with them you're worried about. I think that's my only battle shock. Yeah. Um. So yeah. inspire them. I lost six. I am not going. So I actually want them to all run away. 
So that way I can try to bring them back. Oh, I got the Master Molder. Because I have the Master then. Molder. All right. Fair. And I'm pretty sure the Master Molder is going to be eaten by Radicar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he sees them. He wants to go give them a swirly later. He's going to go beat them up. All right, so let's see if they run away. So I lost six. They're bravery four. So I lose D6 plus two. Yeah. That is going to be... So I lose six. You have three remaining. I have three left. Some more like rat zombies coming up for me. I obviously owe you some pretty nasty morale as well. I'm going to inspire the skeletons for a command point. I'll have one left after that. And then I'll use my indomitable over here. Wait, how many points were you in your list? I, think I forgot I'm... to ask earlier. That's the triumph I took, but I don't know if I actually have it. I am 10 points under Skaven. 1990 for you, 1980 for me. I'm actually double checking my points. I, th I think I'm 1980. They are going to not have to run away because they were hit by a catapult and that means two more guys would run. Unfortunately, that does mean my grave guard have to run away and they were shot by a catapult. So effectively bravery eight. Or I think there's like the catapult's mechanically better. Two more models run away, I think is better. That's, you count as two more casualties taken. Okay. Which is the same as minus two bravery. I think so, yeah. So I lost. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I lost 10. So I'm losing D6 models. Yep. Up. Uh, one. All right. All right. It's a little lackluster. I don't think I, anyone's happy the about that. If the catapult didn't hit, didn't target them. That's you, true. You, you wouldn't have lost any. That's fair. And they're inspiring and so are the zombies. So that should be the end of the turn. Your battle tactic was to retreat with two units and charge with two units. You got that finished. Excellent job there. Two points. And then I think you're just on the same amount of objectives. Uh, yep. I didn't take either of those. So, yep. Four points for Skaven. Four and points. And we're going to turn two for myself. And we're going to roll some primal magic up. You still have one. I used mine. I contribute nothing. And say same. I guess we're, the primal magic is light in this game. <laughs> Okay, here we are, bottom of turn two, updated command points, and updated score. So far the pacing is pretty similar, so nothing too crazy going on here. At the beginning of the hero phase, before I do my battle tactic, it doesn't matter much, just so I remember it, I'm going to use his Lord of the Shambling Bones. It's technically at the beginning of the hero phase, it's just a really, why not the combat phase? I guess that this one you have to like plan it out a little bit more. I'm not too sure, it doesn't really matter. But he's going to put it on the Graveguard, because they, they got the eye on the prize over there. Now my battle tactic is going to be Endless Nightmares. That is a uh, Soul Light Gravelord specific one where I have to pick one of my summonable units and if I get six of the models back in the unit um, that turn, I get my battle tactic complete. It's pretty likely to happen, but it's still kind of a gamble. I think it's technically safer. Uh, it's safer I pick the Skeletons because they automatically get half of what is... Not automatically, they still have to roll. Uh... So I'm gonna pick the skeletons because they're more they're more likely to do it. I just at any point during the turn, six of them have to come back to the unit. So this thing gives D3 plus four because of the gravesite nearby. And then during combat, I roll for whatever's missing, and then I might get even more back. Still gonna use a command point to rally these guys, because I am missing nine, and I like my graveyard to be at full strength if possible. Action is gonna be leadership to see if I can make this free on a four-up. Okay, no, cost me one of my two command points. Do leadership as well? Yep, heroic leadership on the bell, and I get it. All right, all yours. This one over here? Yes, sir. Missing nine grave guard. I'm going to get back two with a rally. Get the musician back and a regular guy. Play that sweet, sweet music. Yeah, with your lungs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this should be beginning hero phase stuff done. I am going to go to healing, deathly invocations. It got, I, actually, I was, I, I was unaware of this for a while, but the FAQ clear, clarified that you get to do with all your characters. Now, a unit cannot benefit from it more than once, but no longer... I, I just really felt like it read, like you just pick one character and choose three units nearby them, but it's every one of your characters picks three units, but a unit can never benefit, benefit from it more than once. Anyways, I'm going to have the Graveguard, the Skeletons, and them deathly invocate. So it's going to be three models back per unit, plus one for the Gravesites they're near. So they're going to get four. But anything holy within 12 of this, which is the Skeletons and the Graveguard, get D3 plus... Instead of flat three, it's D3 plus three. But in this case, it would be D3 plus four because of the Gravesites. So it's very... This thing brings back a lot of models. But that's kind of like all it does. <laughs> it has a once per game big nuke, which is kind of nice too. Zombies are going to get four back. I'll start with that. They got four back in that unit, and they got a roll for the graveyard. They get D3 plus four. Oh, we're getting nine, nine back. Seven. Seven, oh. sorry, seven, yeah. All right, they're all back, actually. I forgot about the two rallies. That is a full 20 strong of graveyard after being harassed a little bit by catapults. And then D3 plus four of the skeletons there. I put the graveyard in the back because I need room for the skeletons to move around. 
Uh, that's six. There, we'll get the battle tactic form. Uh, without me having to, I guess, sorry, I should say the mortise engine is also really good for allowing that battle tactic to happen more consistently as well. Otherwise, it's kind of rely on like skeletons kind of hitting a good uh, recuperation in the combat phase and whatnot. All right. It's as if nothing happened. <gasps> death. Sorry. Can't help <laughs> myself. Okay. That's death and the invocations finished. Now we can go ahead and cast spells. I will start with the vampire lord. He can cast two spells. I am going to start with a spirit gale. Double six. <laughs> We got the big version again. So that is going to be six units taking a mortal wound. Master of Magic is in range. Uh, you can reroll. I will Master of Magic. And Nine. then you need I to have a primal dice. Yep, you're going to use it. I am going to use it. Spirit Gale prevented. Not bad, not bad. Go ahead with the second spell. It'll be Mystic Shield. Uh, what, well, five and a two. Got it with a seven. Master of Magic trying to stop it. You do? All right, Master Magic prevented my Vampire Lord. I like it. It makes sense. The Necromancer is going to cast Von Hell's Dance Macabre, which will allow the zombies to fight and maybe free themselves up in the combat phase. Van Hell's Dance Macabre cast on a 7, which is good. All right, well, technically, you want them to die, so you're not even going to try and stop it. So they will, I think it's just they fight, so they'll pile in and do all the fancy stuff. And that also ticks up the Mortis Engine. Got four out of six. Got them all consolidated around those three rats. I am. I did pull myself out of range of the Vigor Mortis like a fool, but whatever. It's all good. I don't think I need it too much here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Zombies attacking for a total of 30 attacks. 15. Fives to hit. Ooh, looks spicy. Five hits. And on top of that, we have another five hit. Six hits. Seven. No, okay, 12 hits. And four is to wound. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, seven six ups because of Mystic Shield. Six ups. All right, they die. They're all dead. So then I get to use the Master yes. Molder ability. I can't remember what it's called, but like you just get an identical <laughs> unit to it. And what's that one called? Unleash more more beasts. He's got them hidden away in his cloak. So they're hiding under there. He's gonna take them out on a three up. He gets an identical unit back. Yes. So eighteen giant rats come back out. Bye bye rats. Oh, it means you have to take your models back. That's okay. I guess I'll I'll put the zombies in their place. Now, I don't get the newly dead rule here because it's at the end of the combat phase it triggers. This is the hero phase, so I don't get it for Von Hells. Those rats have uh, grown to fully fledged zombies. I'm very proud of them. And so is this necromancer. We are setting up the new unit of giant rats over here. Nine away from me near the uh, pack master. Or sorry, master molder, technically. Yes. We go back there with them. Okay. I think that concludes my... Well, I wanted to get rid of that bell, but I have no wizards left. So that definitely concludes my hero phase. I'm going to get rid of this little token because I used it up and we're good to go to movement. Hmm. I don't really, I'm not, I'm going to move, uh, I'm going to move a couple things here. I might end up running this thing, which I don't like, but I want it to get its aura up near these zombies. And I'm probably going to have the <laughs> mortise engine jump up as well. We're just going to see what we can get done here. Zombies moving up again, pretty close to the clan rats. So got to stay three away from them. The necromancer moves up as well. Uh, I did forget to mention that we brought back one of the clan, the one missing clan rack at clan rack at the <laughs> end of Andy's turn there for battle shock. These guys are already at full strength. I am, part of me wants to run Radicar because he can run and charge. I'll look at what these ranges look like. I think I'm just good with him just moving eight though. Yeah, I'm just going to move him eight. He'll hop from here to here with an eight inch move. I assume you want to redeploy so something. Then I will redeploy then for the Master Molder. Boom. You could use the uh, leadership oh, one. I will use the yep. one from the bell. Yeah. Trying to slink away, I see. Wait. Put a six inch charge again over there. Not bad. I can work with that. I am going to run this corpse guard to try and get its aura up there further, but part of me just wants to at the double it. Necromancer is going to move back. I'm going to order this thing to at the double, and I'm going to suffer D3 mortal wounds for it running. Be two, as uh, its little crappy wheels get caught in the mud and everything. We have a ward save, though. We still take two. It's going to move up here, and then the necromancer is going to move here. Just to clarify things. Moving up there, just make sure the Necromancer doesn't get interrupted in his move. And then the Mortis Engine is going to ominously float forward. Going to go to the road for now. And then the rest of this, uh, I'm going to move the White King over here. We're going to retreat the skeletons. And then I'm going to move the Graveguard a little bit. We're going to retreat zombies back that way through the gap that the White King made. Uh, White King over moved a little bit. I want him to stay near the skeleton. I guess I could fix it with the skeletons anyways. And then the Graveguard move into that gap that was made. They're just going to charge through it to go for the hell pit here. 
I am gonna end my movement there. I do have to roll for my dire wolves, though. I lost the unit of dire wolves earlier, and on a three up, I get half that unit back. Not today, scumbags. They stay dead. Okay, well, I didn't realize the Mortis Engine had a 16 inch range Banshee attack, so on a four up, the Banshees attack him and deal two mortal wounds. And then for the clan rats over there, Banshees attack them and deal two more wounds as well. Because this is monumental 16 inch range, these clan rats are in range as well, but they dodge the Banshee scream or they cover their ears. The acolytes are too far away. 16 inches though, that's pretty impressive. I didn't realize that. Another good boon of the Mortis engine. Shows how much I know. Charging, we're gonna go with the graveyard. Oh, okay. <laughs> sure. Thank you, Taco Cats. Charging in, I don't wanna to get too far away from the Vampire Lord though, he's pretty critical here. When playing Undead, you have 14 auras, you have to stay in it at all times to make the most out of your units or else you're just throwing them away, essentially. Okay, that is it for that charge. I am gonna to go to the other side of the, well, I'm actually just gonna charge with the uh, zombies there. Let's see what they get, they're gonna go seven. Don't overextend too much because I want to stay near the corpse cart, so we're just gonna have uh, those guys go in there. And then Mr. The Beast, not that one, but that one, is going to go ahead and charge, and he's going to get an eight on that one. He's an animal! <laughs> That's uh, pretty much it for charges. I don't believe he's a monster, but you do have a help hit abomination to work with uh, on your rampage. You're going to stomp on him? Stomp. Oh, it works. It does they three. Ooh, three mortals. Three big feeties. I ward. Uh, two of them. I try my best to be as miserable as I can when playing the Soul Blade Grave Lords. Ah, uh, where's the fakes initial? He's back there, he'll die. At the start of the combat phase, the vampire is gonna give them the Crimson Feast. They're all gonna have three attacks each that are two damage. They will 100% go with the graveyard first. I'm not gonna bother piling in. I'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 of them attacking. One of them is the Seneschal. Uh, it's gonna be 30, 40, it's actually 40 attacks with the Seneschal. I'm only gonna do 10 attacks, because that's probably enough to do it. Every six is two hits. There we go. Uh, so that many hits. These are fours to wound because they're great weapons. They're weird that they're one less to wound with instead of hit with, but that's two more wounds and uh, four saves at minus one. I up because he's got the sinew. Uh, that's going to be that's four on him. Yep. So he's got, he takes four of six damage from the first 10 attacks of 40. So he dies, but yep. we're going to, we're going to roll. I'm not going to bother with the rest of the attacks. Uh, the too horrible to die too roll. Too horrible to die. He rolls on a chart. Here. I need you to roll not a super high roll. Okay. Uh, two is units within three inch take D3 mortal wounds. That is okay. It's like uh, th so, there's a big, um, there's like a mountain of rats inside of him that explode out and uh, scurry around and do mortal wounds. So I'll lose three of them maybe. Do the ward saves and then I got to see if the skeleton stand back up too. Kind of forgot. Two live, <laughs> one dies. Blech. So that guy would die from the rats exploding out. And I am missing eight skeleton warriors there. Four up there, bones reanimate. We're gonna get, sure, we're gonna get back five of them. We're just gonna kind of pop up in and around this general area here to protect the characters a little bit more. Go undead. Hashtag fun dead gang. <laughs> you all know it, you all love it. It's kind of bad because like when it really, really works, it really works. That's where, because it can be kind of obnoxious. I guess I can take up that spot too. Then we come to your pick. I'm going to do the Skaven thing with the Master Molder. Scurry away! Scurry away. He's so, gonna... Retreat. He gets to run away six inches, and he's looking to try to take out the Corpse Cart next turn. I'm not surprised. <laughs> the Corpse Cart is uh, very shoddily made. It's very easy to kill once you look at it it's the right good, way. Good target for a Skaven. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Ooh, an easy target. I'll go for him. <laughs> well, that means I get to pick what I fight with, and... Uh, I guess I'll just go, I'll just go with the zombies. I don't care about Ryder Car, he just heals. I already know the zombies aren't gonna pile in any further into the Skaven line, so I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven zombies attacking, that's about it. These are fives to hit. This is all of them, by the way. They're gonna all up defense. All right, well you have two <laughs> saves and one mortal wound. Four up. All right. Saved one, one dies. So two, well, two dive. Two dive with the mortal wound. And then that is about it. Boom and boom. That's my pick. My rats are gonna swarm around Mr. the Beast and try and get as much damage onto him as they can. 15 of them able to attack because they got two inch reach with their current unit size. Now, Radicar does have uh, unnatural reflexes, I believe there is. Minus one to hit and wound him. Sorry, it's called supernatural reflexes. My bad. With no real bonuses on them. It's five hit and five to wound, but they are gonna be rent two if they go through. Because it's a un new unit, they're not whipped. Watch, watch. Candy narrow. And to wound. Hey. Not bad. We got we some got there. Six. Six at Ren 2. 
four up save goes to a six up as they tear right through him. And then he's got a ward as well. Okay, takes two. Wow, look at that. Look at him go. I believe I'll just go with him next. It's the most logical one. Yep. A six attacks with his blood slith claws. Threes to hit. Uh, that's two more wounds. Boop. One wound there. And then this is threes to wound. Round of two. So two damage each, so that's six damage in rats. And then those little companions have some attacks. The Bloodborne are kind of nuts, too. Uh, okay, well, I should have definitely all that attacked here. Oh, actually, I have no command points. I can't all that attack. What did I use my command points on? Oh, well. And uh, one wound at rend one. Just two damage, though. Cuts up two more rats. Two more rats. Two more rats. Oh, you got the little guys. I haven't said I love those. Those are some of my favorite giant. Like, oh, they're so cute. All right, uh, that's after he attacks, he heals wounds equal to the amount of damage he dealt. That is, uh, he's back yep, up to, eight. He's, he's, he's up to six, <laughs> but he's back up to full. And that is my pick. You get to go piling in some of the clan rats over here. Oh, no, knocking over the, the bell. bell. Lots of little rats coming in. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I wonder if it's kind of frowned upon to feast on rats. I know in like, uh, Oh crap, what is that? What is that setting called? Vampire the Masquerade. Ah, oh, make fun of me, I can't remember. I'm thinking of Interview with the Vampire, right? Well, is there's it, that, yeah. You know, he's in the graveyard eating rats. Not the supposed the to movie. eat rats. I remember it was frowned upon. Like, you, you don't get it. You know, it's kind of like, oh, you're eating rats, really, dude? Come on. <laughs> the Darkness, I figured it out. I didn't Google it, I swear. <laughs> I remember it. <laughs> All right, uh, what do we got going on here? So I'm uh, 13 because I forgot about the champions, my plus one attack on that. Oh, perfect. And I'm fours by fours. I don't think I'm any negatives. I got nothing going on me, so. All right. Hey. There we go. Good clan wet roll. Lots of ones and twos. As you would expect. Uh, afraid of the vamp or the zombies. I would be. I wouldn't want. I would not want to be in this situation right now. <laughs> if I could avoid it, I, Luca would. You would not find me here. I have six up saves. I have six up wards. I lose three zombies. I'm gonna pick three zombies that are kind of in the front, and you take a mortal wound as you are dragged down and torn apart. I'll just lose one, two. Three zombies, I suppose. One rat from the back. Uh, that should conclude the combat phase. So I killed two of your rats with melee attacks, and I will get two zombies back in the unit. And then we're going to bring them to the battle shock phase, which you automatically pass because of the bell. These guys are within, everything's within range. Yep. And uh, that means... D3 back from those guys. Yes. I one. get a whopping one rat that is brave enough to step into the... Boom, boom, boom. I'll just have a couple of zombies back here because again, I don't want to overextend past that corpse card. Actually, I'll put mine would happen first. I'll put oh, one yeah. zombie there, and then that's it, doesn't change much. You can right. still put them there, yeah. Yeah, all right. Uh, for scoring, I got my battle tactic done with the skeletons over there, and I'm on these three objectives. And I don't think I got the he counts as 12 models, so he's impressive mm. in that regard. But you have two plus the whatever six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I love it all, and then a bunch of them and that, so I don't steal it. But I'm working towards it. Yeah, he's he's nasty. There. Yeah. I believe I have any battle shocks to do. Now, again, that's only because of his command trait that says uniques can take. Uh, we'll see, though. And with another four points locked in <laughs> for both players at the end of the second battle round, we got a priority roll to make. A four and a five. Perfect. I assume you would love to keep the priority. You are correct. All right, so we'll be turn three for the rats. Primal magic. Oh, nothing for me. Nothing for you. For All right. Me. With that, we'll have an update on the score. Absolutely zero primal magic and dead tie at the top of turn three. And what is the battle tactic for this turn? I'm going to do the new Skaven one, Flea Flea. I got <laughs> two units in combat that can run away. Yep. So I'll be running away. It's just a strictly better bait and trap. Yep. So it's, it's Skaven needed it because their battle tactics are suspect. Uh, and what's your action going to be? I'm going to do heroic leadership on that bell. And not I am not do. going to do it. I will do willpower on the White King, and I'm going to choose for this vampire to be able to cast a couple spells and unbind a couple spells and all that fun stuff. I'm just going to go ahead and use the willpower to try and get rid of that screaming bell right yep. now. I That's five to cast? I believe so. Get that off my table if that's true. It's indeed five, so we've got, but I only have three other unbinds now. The War of Lightning Vortex is always the thorn on my side. What are we starting with? Uh, is there anything else? That, oh, we have to ring the bells. Ring the bells. So this will be the first one. We'll do that one over there. Boom. Two. On a two, that is the extra six inches of movement. Okay. Always useful. <laughs> yeah, so useful right now. <laughs> <laughs> always useful, hemmed in behind all the clan rats. This bell. Same thing, okay. They're they're uh, on their way. All right. Well, then we are going to go ahead and go cast some spells. So we want to start with the Skitterleaf. Skitterleaf from this Gracier. Hey, yeah. 
Seven. That'll go off on a seven plus two, so that's a nine. <sighs> if I could stop that, that could stop some of these shenanigans. You can still get a warp lightning vortex down, but not as far as you would like it. Not over here, mainly. Yes. So I'm gonna try and stop this. It's a nine. There's not much I could do about that other than roll a 10. Damn, all right, luck. Oh. Oh, just... Sorry. <laughs> hey, no, that's good. That's good for me, yeah. It's good. He did it. Oh, this is actually at six now because I dispelled the spell and unbound magic. Yep, and you unbound. So, so that's I, it. I, I can run into your arm. <laughs> I'm coming, dude. <laughs> the other Gracie on the bell. Yep, he'll do Krex calls onto the zombies. Same as last time, eh? So seven, that'll be seven, nine. eight, nine. I'll let you have it. The zombies are super, hopefully superficial. 2d6. Minus four. Minus four, so they take nothing. They step out of the way of the fissure. They're they're quick. <laughs> They've done this song and <laughs> dance before. You got some nimble zombies. <laughs> we do have to resolve the mortal wounds on them. Uh, it's been a whole turn since more and more war power, so they're gonna suffer D three mortals. Ooh, three of them, three of them uh, give into the magics. They're gonna go do better things in a better rat place than here. <laughs> go for a hoarfrost. Hoarfrost from the general master of magic. Mister Magic Master Man. Uh, uh, he'll keep that with an eight. <sighs> That increases the hit, wound, or, uh, yeah, I'll let you have, uh, those guys are gonna be nasty running up to me, throwing bombs at me. That's not cool. I'll let you have it. I, I'll try and save the spell for something else. Yeah, so this will be on the clan rats. Let's see. A three. So Ren they three? will have Ren three clan Ooh. rats. Moving on to the second Gracier spell. Yep, Mystic Shield on a seven. I'll keep that. Uh, then you'll have three spells to cast yep, after one, this. Yeah, one, two, three after this. I definitely want to stop his, and uh, I'll let you have it. I want to stop his and maybe a Warp Lightning Vortex, maybe. All right. Also going to go on the Clan Rats. It's, it's Clan Rat action time, baby. <laughs> and then, what's next? Next, we're going to do uh, Wither from uh, that guy. He has Wither oh, built in. No, crack. sorry. Yeah. He does not have Wither. Yeah. Um, he will just do... Arcane Bolt? Arcane Bolt. Right. Five. Uh, five, six, seven. You got two casts left, you can have it, I suppose. Then Death Frenzy. Death Frenzy from that guy. Don't like that, I'll try and stop. Uh, Wait. Four, five, six, so. I'll, my, oh, you could, well, you can't reroll. You can't. I cannot reroll. Yeah, nothing about that, yeah. Oh, you, yeah, you got it, I got, I got a four. It. So Death Frenzy on the clan rats. I got one unbind left on the Necromancer. And that's going for more and more warp yes. power. I want to stop this if I can. Um, seven? Seven. Um, I'm not going to use a warp power. It's five, you got it. So that'll be on the um, Acolytes again. All right, fair. Into the hero phase, lots of spells. Again, this is, this is six cast lists. It's nuts. Yep. No, it's no, a, seven cast lists. Seven cast lists. Seven cast oh, list. <laughs> thank God I stopped that. Skater. As long as the, the longer I can not deal with that Warp Lightning Storm, the better off I am. That'll just cripple me. Yep. Uh, it cripples everyone. All right, uh, movement, where do you want to go? Or do you know where you want to start? I'm going to start with the clan rats, moving them on up. All right, come on, action clan rats. Their regular move, I got no redeploys off that, so. These guys are going to use at the double. <gasps> D3 mortal runes. They're going to take D3 mortal runes. Two They're of the dummies slip in mud and one drowns in a pool of muddy rainwater. I don't know, it's funny to imagine. Yeah, I know, I know. They're going for the graveguard. Whatever it is, what it is. They went for the help, but hopefully the graveguard don't get... Hopefully enough acolytes have died to miscellaneous damage. Yeah. That it'll I'll be okay, I don't know. They're, you can warp spark token them, so you definitely want to make sure the bombardier moves that way, too. They'll be followed. They're scooting up this way with their at the double. There was 10. Now there are 7. Started with 15. Oh, there was 15? They were double reinforced. Yeah, they were double reinforced. So. It's a cool unit, I get it. Yeah, yeah. The the Then he's just moving up to there. Um, and then this thing has extra movement. Actually, they both do, technically. Yep. You say that because I want you to get closer to my reliquary. <laughs> With them moving there, I guess they can't stay outside of nine and throw their bombs. They have to risk it anyway, so they come. Uh, I will redeploy them uh, for a command point. I'll have two left, and they're going to go three. Let's keep me moving backwards, so the back of that guy's base will be about here. I guess that's the... It's a good defensive weapon on the Acolytes, but... Uh, it could be easily mitigated, I suppose. If I could have rolled a one. There's always that, too. I'm just going to move not a whole lot of them. Just moving, boom, and then these guys are going to disappear as well. Kind of around here or something. We'll be able to see a seven and nine with that. Okay, what is next? Bell's going to, with his whopping movement of now 12. Ooh, and it no longer needs to be pushed into battle if anyone is curious. It just simply moves now, which is mechanically for the better, because it was really easy to counteract mm -hmm. uh, the chariots. This gonna guy's go gonna sneak up into there. Under the rock there, hanging up behind the bell. 
They die. They getting out of there? These rats are gonna make like a rat and retreat. Retreat out. That's one of the flea fleas. Yep. Bell's gonna move towards a radicar. Oh boy, this is gonna be a radicar fight with the and bell. Maybe that's the plan. All right, we're gonna and retreat. then these guys are gonna get the other flea flea. All right. Well, there we go. Flea flea accomplished. <laughs> The Master Mulder's got his eyes on the prize back there, baby. <laughs> Going for the weak target in the back. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, okay, that is going to be end of the movement phase. I will see if I can bring in my dogs on a 4+, plus because it's not my turn. Ooh, we got five dogs back. Rise they do from that gravesite. I would have loved to come here to threaten this, but I cannot because of the triangulation of enemy units. And then anywhere else doesn't really help me too much, but it is what it is. That's it for movement. We got lots of shooting. Well... We got catapult shooting. Yep. What do you want to start? Well, we're going to start with catapults. All right, fair. We'll what start with this catapult and uh, go into my favorite target. Oh, a grave guard? The grave guard. <laughs> well, there's no real point in, uh, what's it called, all the defense against one attack. So yep. may uh, you miss or hit, I guess. Twos by twos. Hit. That's a wound. Roll up the damage. 2d6. There we Ooh, go. That's a nine. Five aboard for the phylactery, making three, rerolling these. We're losing four, five. Have that level the back of them a little bit. And these guys, three, four, five die. I gotta make sure I keep them tight to the mortise engine. All right. At the end of the movement phase. Oh, yep, that's right. We have one more thing coming in for the end of the movement phase. Under the waterbed here comes the, don't tell me, their warp sto ah, tunneler? What are they called? Grinder. Warp Grinder, warp, warp grinders. grinders. So almost drowning underneath the water there, but <laughs> popping up near that old pond, uh, threatening um, surround and destroy for later turns. Yep. Can't do it this turn, but you can do it in future turns because yep. they have to be on the table to pick it. But you can also threaten my back objective there, yep. which actually probably already are. I guess that's tough. I do have the Mortis engine on it as well. So currently two to your one, but I don't know, maybe if the Mortis engine dies. Pull number two into the Grave Guard, same idea. Hits, wounds, and 2d6 damage. Ooh, Six. not bad. Better than last time. <laughs> Six, five ups. Oh, uh, we make three of them. Wow. And roll. Is that phylactery is a really good Man. artifact. Man. Two die. Five up rolling ones is kind of nasty. We'll lose two more. Third. Uh, try and go for the zombies here on the last plague yep. claw. Same idea. Twos by twos. Hit. Wound. And, and a two to six dead-ish. Six. Six. I got three days here in my hand, so... We're going to lose three plus two. I'll lose from the front here. Because we want you to charge a little bit closer in me. If you do. All right, so I'm going to more... Actually, I lied. I am going to eat a Warp Spark token on this to boost it up to damage four. Yep. And I'm going to more more Doom Rocket it, which makes it D6 attacks. But whenever I roll on an unmodified hit of one, then I take D3 mortals back. He's essentially trying to shoot D6 missiles. Yeah, yep. rockets. So, so three, three rockets shots go off. And for every one, it explodes in your face as you try and yep. shoot it, yeah. So fours by X. No, I'm not going to spend a command point to all out attack this. Yeah. Fours by threes. Oh, no ones. So no ones. And one hit. One hit, though. And it's a wound. That's four damage. Four damage, one rend. It's a good, clean explosion right in the heart of the zombies. Three of them are going to succumb to it. Again, this you just shoot the front rank there as they go down. Uh, go ahead and roll me the Warp Spark token now before we forget, because it shouldn't change anything. On yep. a one! You're good. I'm good. That'll be it for shooting. We'll do the bell first, trying to charge into Radicar. Roll me two ones. I will not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the animal here. Ba -ba Boom. And you can throw an Arcane Bolt in the fight phase coming up. I'll charge in there. Does he do impact hits? Anything I don't know. Hey, you no impact hits. I'm not, not surprised. I'm just more curious. All right, who is next? These clan rats. Uh, they can retreat and charge. That's a clan rat thing. Oh, six. Six. Uh, we'll measure that. I think they're... Ooh, charging there and wrapping around the tree a little bit to get a few more models on the objective here. No one's rolled. Who's next? These clan rats? These clan rats that, for some reason, are buffed up really strong. They got shields. They got hoarfrost on them. And death frenzy. And four. <laughs> I don't think they're in. Um... Uh, no bonuses there. The musicians are run rolls. Would you like to use your last command point to get clan rats into combat? I think I need to save that for inspiring presence. Do me a hypothetical roll. I always like to see hypotheticals. The path the game the, can take 11. They would have made it. <laughs> That's a good charge, too. But, and that comes to the Master Molder trying to tear apart my chariot. He takes D3 mortal wounds and makes it. Boom. He slips in a little bit of mud on his way in there. One. Hey, bad. 
Longhorn was left, and he makes contact. Uh, is that it for charges? That is it for charges. You want to go ahead and Arcane Bolt here at the start of the fight phase? I do. Let's get that out of the way before we so forget. D3 mortals. Two of them. I will just pick that up and do two board saves for all of you fine folks at home. He's got 12 wounds. I should probably roll so that Andy can see, but he's got 10 wounds now. Uh, combat phase things. I don't need to do anything with the vampire. I don't think... I don't think I need to do much at all. You just want to go with the bell first? Yep. All right. You know what? I'm not going to bother defensing here. The best defense for him is going to be his offense. So we'll see how that works out. Uh, all, do you want all that attack or anything? Or keep nope. your command point for the nope, Inspire? No, I'm saving it for Inspiring Presence. I keep trying to... I keep yeah, accidentally I <laughs> trying to bait it out. It's just more of an option. I was like, oh, I'm just going through the steps. All right, well, let's see what he's got. Now, he does have that supernatural reflexes. He will be harder to hit and harder to wound. What are we attacking with first here? We'll do the Warpstone Staff. And this is goes to fives by fives. Okay, well, the negatives didn't matter at all. He just didn't roll well <laughs> at all there. All right, now the Rat Ogre, Tearing Cling, Claws and Fangs. Goes to fives by fours. So I stopped one hit. He stopped one. And then the uh, Rusty Spikes. This, ah. this bell is pretty good. Yeah. This, fours by fours. This is the impact. Oh, it's threes normally, eh? Not bad. And, and fours. I remember these used to have rules if you charge. They got like rerolls or something. Yep. I guess they got rid of it. What's yep. the rend of that? One? Uh, one rend, one damage. Well, it's four up save. Let's do a five up. All right. And this is the <laughs> opposite on the rolls here. <laughs> good job, Bell. Yep. Good job, Bell. <laughs> the only other fight I have is here. I am not going to all that attack because I want to save that for Mr. the Beast. I'm going to pile in a little bit though. The tree is uh, trouble. Boy, I'm actually just going to go with the corpse card first. <laughs> Look at that sick piling. Zombies have 2d6 attacks. It's four. Let's gonna roll these. Got a couple hits. Uh, no follow up hits. Sorry about that. Fives and fives. So no wounds there at all. And he's got the goad. Get him. Stab. No. Accomplish <laughs> nothing. That's my pick. You got clan rats and this master molder left. So the clan rats make the most sense. Doing, uh, you want to pile up and around, get a few more attacks in, or nope. you already have... Oh, because you want to keep I want to stay as close. I need to yeah. make sure I, I actually can't have a lot of casualties, or else you're going to take that objective. Where are the... Where's the champion of that unit? Champion is this dude back here. All right, so you'll have nine attacks because of the extra range. Yep. Fours to hit. Clan rats. Fours to wound. All right, three. 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 Sixes? <laughs> <laughs> No, we, we lose a zombie. Does he drag you down with him? Yes. Boom. This dude out. I'll pull that guy. So let's go with these zombies now. I got a little bit more flexibility with the corpse card, so I'm going to pile in a wee bit here and get a few more zombies attacking. Not that much by any means. Three, four, five, six, seven of them. Ah, uh, this guy could technically get in range to attack, keeping coherency this way. So let's get one guy attacking that Master Molder, then seven of them attacking the Clan Rats. Master Molder is missed. This twice with the other guys. Three hits on the first. Second one will give me, okay, four more, so that's seven hits. Oh, three more, so six hits. And four to wound. Sixes are good. All right, three saves and a mortal wound. Uh, five up armor. Yeah. I'll kill three of them. Three clan rats go down. Take out this guy, this guy, and I don't really want to lose the banner, but <laughs> he's the only other guy outside of range, so there goes the banner. Okay. And he'll come back at the battle shock phase, hopefully. That's true. And the Master Molder. Master Molder have the Things Catcher. <laughs> so four attacks, fours by fours. Nice. Good man, good job. <laughs> I would I, I classified that as the Things. Fours by, all right, one run, two damage. Well, I think I don't have a save, but I'm gonna roll anyways. Nope, that's not gonna do it. And my ward. Ha <laughs> ha! Can't help. It. I just can't stop today. This dude. is fantastic. Oh my gosh. This is this is the struggle. This game is just difficult. Difficult in general. Uh, that'll bring us to the end of the goal. Radicar's got to go. I will. He doesn't have to. I, you, uh, I think he, he, he might. Actually, he actually I, might have to. I think by rules he actually has to. <laughs> I am going to all that attack him. I don't really need to pile in. Whatever. I am going to. Um, what am I trying to think here? I'm gonna attack with blood suck claws. All that attack, two state. If I just, I've been rolling so many sixes. If I just crank six sixes, that's twelve mortal wounds. I'll take three six though. <laughs> three hits. That's six mortal wounds, and two saves at rend two. All right, two saves at rend two gives me armor save six up. All right, I saved one. So that's eight damage so far. His two little companions, and two saves at rend one. Five up. Oh, take nice. Both of those. Eight damage, you take them however you want. Wards or pass them off, up to you. I'm good. Protection of the Great Horn Rat it is. Five up. 
Oh, it saves four of them. Save four of them. Horned Rat likes the guy. We do four damage, and we heal back up to four. Smash the bell. Must smash the bell. Okay. Well, I think we're. I get to see if I add uh, clan rats to my zombie unit now. I killed three, and three are going to join the unit. In, in the battle shock phase, you're going to inspire them. Yep. You didn't take any other casualties. Uh, I did over here. Oh, yes. I they... took. I have three casualties from there, from the more... No, five. Yeah. Three from the more, more warp power. Are you sure you don't want to inspire them? <laughs> I'll let you think about it. Let me it. think about that. And some of these clan rats joining up over here to protect it with this master molder. Uh, coherent to the parent unit, whatever. We'll go bam, bam, and over here, bam. Just intermingle them there. To inspire them. So then Battleshock over there. We'll have to figure out how many died. We'll roll it for them figure. Six? Okay, it's not that, great. That's... I believe I only killed three. So that's a nine of the Bravery Four. Bravery Four, so five more run. Five are deciding to not be here anymore. And then D3 come back. Yep. Because they actually do like it here. <laughs> well, I mean, they're scurrying out of their little rat tunnels, joining into the battle, like, ah, oh, that's what's going on. Ah. <laughs> will be another standard bear. And just some, just a pile on the around the objective. I did forget I'm missing three skeletons in Andy's combat phase. They're all back. Skeleton. This is brutal. It's clan rats and zombies. I'll just put them in the back here just so I don't get any extra movement out of it. Just all stand back up over here. E. All right, now it is bravery time. I lost Graveguard and I lost zombies. They were both shot by catapults. So it's going to be a little bit heavier on the battle shocking. D6 minus one Graveguard running away. I'm gonna use Inspiring Presence on them. I'll go to zero command points and I'll roll the zombies. Even though I don't really want to, the zombies are starting to hemorrhage their models, but uh, we'll see how that goes for them. Yeah, yeah, so hypothetical roll. I would've lost four. That's worth the command point for me. And I gotta figure out what the zombies are gonna lose. Nine zombies died. So 11 died, so D6 plus one are boogie and five zombies are out of here. I'm actually just gonna lose these five. So I can rally them. And they're out of combat. Or less the magic's holding them together have fallen apart. All right, so that'll be the end of the turn. You got your battle tactic? I do. And you're on? Two th objectives. Three even, I think. One? Oh, yep. Uh, I'm 12, but you got a one, lot of guys two, here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So you actually took that one from me. You still get your four points. But I still though. get four points. That means I got a lot of pressure on this objective with Radicar over here. Pull up some primal magic. A two? I'm just not helping at all. Okay, we both get one. All right, current score. Would you believe you got another four points on your turn? There we go. Four, 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 four. That's it. Can I get four? Actually, I actually might be able to get five this turn. That'd yeah. be a twist. The battle tactic I want to go for right now is lead into the maelstrom. Charge with the character, charge with some battle line, charge with things, stay in combat with things is the general rule of thumb. So that is what's going to go on here. I have to deal with this guy or else he's going to be annoying. But I don't want the Mortis Engine to be the one to do it, so these zombie dogs who came back are going to have to be the ones to do it. <sighs> so it's good timing on them showing up. It's always funny, the Endless Undead, Endless Legions, because like, I would I would have liked them to turn earlier, but it turns out that it was the, the delay was a little bit better for them. I have to pick a Lord of Shambling Bones that'll go on these Graveguard over here. Just keep it the same. They'll have extra hits. And for actions, well... I don't really need a whole lot, so I'm going to go for a command point on the Necromancer, I guess. Why not? We got it. I'm going to use it to rally those zombies. I am missing 15 zombies from the unit. So here's the first 15. Sorry, I'm missing 25 zombies. Here's 15. I'm getting two back. And then here's another 10 rolled. So two zombies plus three, four zombies. Bring these zombies on this side of the fence just to resurrect here. Boom, 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 boom. Um, what was my battle? Did I say my battle tactic? Lead in the maelstrom. That's my battle tactic. Let's see what we got for bringing things back. Forgot about your heroic action. I would get a command point on that bell. And I'm going to reroll that because <laughs> that's, that's not actually a number. And that is a five. I'll Excellent. take it. And let's go ahead and start with the deathly invocations. I'm going to have these zombies and the graveguard. That should be about it that's coming back. Now, the, both of those units are holding within 12 of the mortis engine. So it's going to be... But they're not near a gravesite, so they're getting D3 plus 3, and the Graveguard are getting D3 plus 4. So the zombies, D3 plus 3, six zombies are coming back, and then the Graveguard are going to get, sorry, seven. And these seven are going to go uh, right around here, I guess. Just keep uh, keep it nice and happy around their parent unit. It's hard to keep them down. They're still, they're at, 
I think 18 is still missing a couple models. The skeletons are at full, and I gotta put six zombies down still. There we go. All right, that should be it for that part of the hero phase. I gotta cast all my freaking spells. Let's do. I'll come back to the Necromancer because I don't know what I want to do with him. We're gonna do the classic Spirit Gale on the Vampire Lord. Ha ha! Ooh! I would love to do a couple Mortal Wounds to everything, but I think I'll just leave it at a seven. Would you like to stop it? I think I would like to stop it. Yeah, it's fair. You got more than enough on lines. I'll use my Master of Magic. And, six. Uh, six, and I'm going to. You need an eight. You could just do a two up on the primal magic die, but it'll leave me with primal magic free. Now, granted, I don't really have anything too scary. And if I re-roll this, I cannot use primal Correct. magic on You're my second in. dice. You're locked in. You're locked in on the re-roll. Yeah. So I'm going to use the primal magic dice. Don't roll the one. And you didn't get it off. All right, no spirit gale. Cast mystic shield as a second spell. Uh, oof. Oh, geez, that's still not like great. You can stop that, and I don't want a primal miscast. So I will Let's keep it at six. Master of magic. Master of magic. You need one more. Reroll. You got Master it. Master of magic. Right, so he is done. Get rid of that. Oop. That guy's done. The spell on him, fading vigor. It's not gonna do anything. There's no real threats. Uh, I'll cast it, I guess. I'll arcane bolt, whatever. I got it with an eight. I throw a primal magic die at it. All right, got it with a nine. We'll try and stop it. Use the bombardier in case I need to use the warp spark token. Oh, true. And uh, ten. No. All right. No I magic for me. I think I'm good. I believe I can go to the moon phase, which is pretty cool. Uh, movement isn't gonna be crazy. I am gonna have the mortis engine move to here. Boom. Keep it tight. And we're gonna have some of the skeletons and the white king shift up as well. Would you like to redeploy anything? Not right now. All right. And then boom. No real redeploying there because it's all about kind of holding line. Plus, you only have the one command point. I on. have the extra oh, I guess one the over leadership there. as well. Yeah, uh, we did move our grave guard forward. No redeploying because you'd rather unleash hell with them, which absolutely makes sense. Leaving a wide berth for the vampire to fly over, because uh, all vampires have fly. Just giving them a bigger base size area there, if need be. And uh, that's kind of it for that movement. I am going to have these dogs and try and hunt this thing down. Ten inch move over that way. I will. It's interesting. I don't really want to. I don't want to do with this guy back here. <laughs> what a nuisance he is. He counts as two models, and so is my corpse cart. I'm just gonna retreat the corpse cart for now. Over this way. It moves four, so it should be okay. Well, I'll move the necromancer first, and then we'll move the corpse cart. There we go. Don't got any dead units, so let's go ahead and shoot. The only shooting I have is the Reliquary. Everything within 16 takes D3 mortal wounds on a 4-up. 4-up, man. That's four brutal. Up. And brutal. How, how you're rolling is going to be all the units. And if, if I get priority, everything within 6, if he charges, takes 6 mortal wounds after that. It just boom. So that'll be, it'll be like a little coup de gras there. Let's go ahead and do clan rats over here, I guess. 4-up. They're good. They dodge it. The Banshee screams. This Screaming Bell's probably within 16. Now i got to look. It's just... Indeed, just checking everything. Yep. That's yeah, so that Gracier is, this one's not, everything except basically this guy. That catapult back and there. And that catapult and the rats. Double check that guy for me. Uh, I was curious about him as well. He's out. He's out. Yeah, he's out. That's okay. All right, D3 mortal wounds on this thing. Two. Would you like to take the ward saves? Um, I'm going to do the three up shunt over. Mm. Oh, it's up to you. You roll it, then pick where you want him to go. I'll Protection of the Great Horned Rat, it is. Yep. Two damage, six remaining wounds. Let's go with the clan rats there. Oh, I already rolled for them. Sorry, that'd be the catapult, I guess. Uh, two more wounds on the catapult. Four wounds left. And then those clan rats right in front, they're good. The bombardier behind them is not good. Bombardier is going to suffer one wound. Should have four left. The screaming skull, not the screaming skull, sorry, the screaming bell. Four up. Three mortal wounds. Protection. Great horned rat says you take one. Not bad. The acolytes. Ooh, I wanted to hit them the most. And then we have the gracier in the very back. Three mortal wounds on that guy back there. Just eating the whale of the damned. Be it for shooting. We can go to charging. Let's start with the mortis engine. I want to get him nice enough and in there. Five, but I take the three. One. No word. I have 11 wounds left, and it'll go not too far at all. Bam, right there. That's one thing. Char well, it's not a battle line, though. Uh, these zombies are going to charge. Ten. Fastest really zombies in the West. Not overextending past the corpse cart, but ex or combating both units there. Let's go ahead with that White King declaring a charge. Not eight. Nice. 
Ooh. No, I rolled a really high charge then, so no more wounds. I was trying to remember if I rolled a one or not. We got a hero charging, and then the skeletons. Eight. We get them in there as well. A couple of other charges. Oh, you know what? I got the dogs right here. Might as well charge with them. And I don't need much, but that'll do. Like one attack. Oh, D6 attacks. Three by threes, two run, two damage. I'm going to deal with that warp grinder first. Out of everything, probably that. <laughs> Grave guard. Actually, let's do the vampire charge. Oh. I don't know if I want the vampire <laughs> charge. I'm going to go with the grave guard charge. They're going to go five, but they got the musician. Let's them go six. We're going to charge like this, leaving that gap open for the vampire to get in there if need be. Otherwise, chaining them back to protect him when he inevitably, inevitably fails. But we are going to unleash hell with these uh, acolytes. So negative one to hit, but plus one to hit. Yep. And plus one to wound. Plus one to wound. So they are back to threes by twos. Yes. Okay. Ooh. There we go. All right, four ones. Thank That's... you, Nuffle, I guess. And twos. There's uh, two rend. And that's 2d3 damage. I got no save. Okay, six. six. The ward save. I'm going to save one. And two. Four die. Well, always kind of one, two, three, four, I suppose. Go down to that unleash hell. I'm going to try and charge the vampire in there. Probably needs like a six or seven. Oh, 2d3 mortal wounds on him. How about we just order him forward to victory instead of taking those mortal <laughs> wounds? Uh, we'll go nine instead. Boom, that, those more wounds could have ended his life. I do, <laughs> I do want to stay three away from that, though, where he'll land, staying away from the uh, Screaming Skull. The screaming Bell, that's a different thing. That will conclude charging. Now we have a lot, like a clash right across the line on turn three, we finally got there. All the little pre-gaming before that just kind of delayed it. Fighting, it's a good call. I think the, my best bet is weirdly enough this. I'll have uh, 11 dog attacks. Let's see, fours and fours. Ooh, not great. And only one wound. Picks up armor. All right, he's got two wounds left. Three wounds, so two left. All right, wounds remaining. Still haven't found a use for that. I, I have in my back pocket summon 10 dire wolves still as a heroic action. I haven't had a good point to use it though. All right, what are we doing on your end? I'm going to do these clan arrests that are moderately buffed with the. Horror Frost and Death Frenzy. Death Frenzy is when they die, they fight? Yep. Yep, okay. But Horror Frost is the Ren 3. Which is Horror Frost funny. is Ren 3, so might as well attack. Yeah. So that way. Do you want to all that attack or save it for your Inspire? I'm going to save it for Inspire because these spells do not give Battleshock immunity anymore. Not anymore, no. So I'm going to save. All right, we figured the attacks out. 15 of them are going to attack the Mortis engine. Where are the other five going? Or six, because one's the champion. Yeah, so including the champion that's going into there, then four going there. And three going there. Gotcha. So it's three going to the zombies, three going to the skeletons, 15 into the mortis engine. And this is into the mortis engine? Yep. Fours, fours by fours. Ren three, though. Ren three, look at all. Oh, gosh. Okay. Cl well, clan rats are great. Hey, Ren three, though. <laughs> Be afraid. Ah, uh, two ward saves and right through his armor. I got him. Three into the zombies. Fours. Hey, and fours. Okay. And then we have three into the skeletons. Fours. And Be afraid, four. man. Hey, ward. Fail it. That's one dead skeleton. Hey. With the vampire, which will let them attack afterwards. I, oh jeez, I don't, don't want to roll this up. <laughs> I'm going to see what, uh, I guess I'll do the vampire first. And it'll let the graveguard kind of fix their pile in a little bit. I'm going to die. He probably. I think I got four attacks with the vampire. I'm too lazy to look it up otherwise. He might have one more, but I don't think it matters. One at rend one. That goes through. Uh, two damage, so it kills two of them. Boom, boom, boom. And then Viracos allowed these guys to immediately fight. First time it's really kind of come up, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. Boom, boom, boom. You fix the coherency there. Island and abandon all objectives. Uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them attacking for a total of 24 attacks because of Crimson Feast. These attacks. These are the only ones I care about. Sixes are extra hit, so they just all hit. Lord of Shambling Bones. And you take four, three mortal wounds, and then you have uh, uh, 10 damage on top of that. Hey, I got him! if that was going to happen or not. Yeah, so. just, we had to check that one good, out. Good thing we double checked. Okay. Okay. That is it for my pick. Coming to these clan rats fighting zombies. And... Okay. Look at that. Doing pretty good. Pretty freaking good. Can they kill zombies though? Probably not. One. No. no. One nope. six up save. Followed by a ward. Nope. I'm going to lose this zombie and see if it takes a rat with him. He does. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Good job, zombie. Undead rat. I am gonna just fight with... I'll go with the Mortis engine, I suppose. Oh, man. I don't want to do any of these. <laughs> so many little attacks. Luke is exhausted. 
Uh, yeah, let's just fight over here, I guess. I'm gonna pile in a little bit, and again, I can't- these guys can't go any further because of the, uh, what's it called? Corpse card. Yep. One, two, three, four, five. Five, seven zombies there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight that way. Tax it these clan rats. Fives to hit the Zaldan. We all got one hit. And no wound. And the eight into the clan rats up there. Fives to hit. Fours to wound. All right, one mortal wound and two saves. Five ups. Two dead rats. Ah, uh, that'd be over there on those oh, ones. Over on these guys? Yep. And they death frenzy, frenzy, let's go. It's gonna be a long combat phase. Here we go, two death frenzy attacks right back at those zombies. One hit. And does a wound. Yes, no save, right to the ward. All right, he's dead. And then does he drag you down and tear you apart? Nope. I'm just gonna lose this guy. Aye. Going back here to the warp grinder. I don't want this guy to do well, because this could be a weird thorn in my side. He can pop off. He can do 12 wounds here. He has D6 attacks. That's a bad start Four. for me. Threes by threes. Okay, good, good. And threes. One of them. Uh, one of them, two rend, no two damage. No save, so ward. I got one die. And I take one damage. Oh, one damage. Nice, go dogs. We, we both suck. Oh my, okay, well my pick again. I'm just gonna go with the Mortis Engine, because... What a pillow fight of a game. I know, it's brutal. Actually, let's go with the, uh, the, the White King. White King! Threes to hit, no sixes. <laughs> one wound to rent one. Five up, go with the oh, six up. You're good. He is a Virko's hero, so he'll let the skeletons pile in a fight. Oh, I don't care, three, five, five of them fighting. I have no abilities on them right now, because that's all on the Grave Guard, so... Force to hit. Three is to wound. One at run one because uh, I outnumbered the clan rats, I guess. One dead Goes clan through. rat. Eat that. And that means death frenzy. Yes, death frenzy. Four and four, baby. Misses. Awesome. <laughs> All right, that's my two picks done there. The only thing I have left is the Mortis Engine and Radicar, but you got the bell. And that's kind of it, I that's guess. That's it. Yeah. I got the bell. And what do we got here? All right, the Warpstone Staff from the Gray Seers. Three attacks, fours by fours. One hit, nice. Ooh. Good job. Uh, the Rat Ogre is fours by threes. One miss, so it's minus one to hit. Oh, that's yeah, right, yeah. thank you, thank you. Oh, well, the, the Gracier still got his hit in. Nope, all right. And the Rusty Spikes does, uh, Here we oh, he's down to six wounds, so he suffered nine, so he's down to five attacks. Oh, I've been ripping those spikes off, have yeah. I? Good job, Radicar, keeping yourself safe. So he's back to fours by fours oh, now, so beautiful. Radicar knocked that one off. One go through, one rend, one damage. All right, Radicar's thick hide keeps him alive. I'm just gonna attack with him next. Man points, so he's gonna attack with these blood slick claws. He's got two mortal wounds, a couple misses, and then, okay, uh, three saves at minus two. Six My. is the save. Saved one. So that's six damage so far. And then we have his companions, which hit. And they strike two wounds at run one. Five up. Oh, that's that's four more damage. That's 12, or sorry, six. Ten damage. Ten damage. And uh, well, I guess you can master clan them off if you want to. Yep. So that's the dream. So do I do ward saves before the master clan, or I just do master clan? Only do the master clan, yep. Okay. So, and I'm gonna try to shun them off to those giant rats. Might as well roll them all. So. Cause uh, there's 10-ish rats there, so it's perfect. Yep, you can just yep. do all, all 10 of them. So every... So three stay on him. Which I believe you can ward, and then that just kills off seven of the rats. Yep. Yeah. We'll roll to see if you make the ward saves, then figure it out. You know what? I don't care. Even if you can't, you make I... one. <laughs> Saves me from having to look up the rule. Throughout like all the third edition, they've kept constantly changing how the bodyguard rule mm -hmm. works. I know there's a standardized version of it now, but uh, that one wound is not going to make or break it for me. So I'm pretty, yeah, yeah, I'll, don't worry about it. And now I get to figure out how a Mortis Engine fights. All right, so we got the Spectral, sorry, the Spectral Claws from all the ghosts around the Mortis Engine. These are just fours and fours. What a great roll. Amazing. You're so good, Mortis Engine. You're just the best. Okay, five saves, no rend. Four up. Uh, oh, Mystic Shield, that's right. Four die, and we know that what that means. Well, we have a couple more attacks. Really creepy dude riding it. Two attacks. Got a hit. With a staff. He's only strength three, he needs force to wound. All right, so you lose your four and they get to fight. Uh, I guess the Mortis Engine, right? right Mortis Engine it is. Fours by four. Oh my gosh! That. They're angry. They all hit. One wound, four. right through his armor because of Horfrost, and we make the ward. Four rats, get out of here. And that, folks, I believe, magically, is the end of that combat phase, which we knew was going to be a little brutal coming up.
Oh, in the combat shocks. phase? I don't think we have any in the combat phase stuff, but we, you, we have battle shocks. I didn't lose enough to battle shock, but you I, did. I did. Yeah. And I have one inspiring presence. Um, Prob which I'll do over here. Sure. Yep. Because they only lost one. Uh, yeah, I didn't do much to them. Because it was good. only the one zombie attack. So some of them could run though. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I lost six over here. So. Yeah. They're going to inspire. That makes Inspiring sense. Inspiring presence, and I'll roll for over there. D six minus three. All right, three run. <laughs> and uh, sure, doesn't really matter. Or plane rides. Did I kill any of them? I can't remember how. I, I'm not going to roll for getting zombies back. I can't remember how many died. No. We killed like two up there and one over there. So it'll be three. Yeah, you killed, you killed one there and two there. So I get three zombies. Brains. I'm just going to put them around here because I don't know. Look at that. Fill that gap in. in. Scoring, I believe I would have this objective, I think. Yep. Because I got the 12 with Hunter's Snare. Yep. I still have that one. Oh. Kind of. Uh, battle shock on my giant rats. Oh, yeah. They I lost, lost many. seven. They're, they're going to be gone. They're out of here. Because they're only leadership four, so they can't actually stay around. But they were able to save this guy's face, which is nice. Hard, it's hard to take these out with the, the Master Clan look at bodyguard rule. Okay. Well, I am on a majority of the objectives. I will be on four of them at least. So that means I get five VPs because my battle tactic, because I'm still in combat with things. So we're good. We're good. We got our battle tactic done. Not bad. You ready to keep the grind going? <laughs> it's a marathon. Ba, 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 ba. A two. A, a two. two. Oh, you get the power on so that one. So I'm going to take it because yeah, absolutely. I'm going to try to break the bell and bring out a vermin lord on my turn. It's good. Yeah, it's a good time to do it here. So he's, how many, what's his total wounds? 12 or 14? Uh, he has total 14. So he's missing 10. So I'm missing 10 plus a two D6. D6. Or a one D6. Your one D6. So you... on a three up, I get a vermin lord. And I think this thing dies. And that thing's gone. Yeah. Let's roll some primal magic up. Ooh, we're getting two each. Not bad. Hey, beautiful. Look at this. Glorious. I have pulled ahead by one whole victory point. <laughs> Battle tactic is easy. Surround and destroy. Surround and destroy. Done. So I'll take that one. Yep. And I'll go for heroic leadership on this bell, because hopefully that bell won't be here anymore. <laughs> and you got it. Okay. I will go for willpower again, just to try and keep up in unbinds on my white king. Oh, no. Let's go ahead. No, I was going to say if I take the damage, but I only take D3, so I'd still be fine. Yep, correct. We're going to go because you could peel a doom before you shatter the bell. I can't remember the rule for the shatter. Stirring shot. beyond the veil. They That's both happen at the start of the hero phase. Yeah. Since it's my turn, I can choose the order. So we're going to peel of doom first, bring this bell on the chart. A four. Four. Ooh. Deafening peels. Until your next hero phase, roll the dice each time a model is picked to issue a command while it is in three inch of a friendly screaming bell that rolled this result. And a five up, that command cannot be issued. Oh, okay. So it's hard to listen to the but orders. But the bell probably won't be around. So right, fair. Don't have worry about it. And this one over here? This one? Uh, four. Same also thing. four. Okay. So that one has it. So anytime I issue an, an order enemy and you're by... An enemy model is picked to issue a command within 13. All right. Shattering doesn't actually remove the model. It's only if you roll an un unmodified one on the D6, and then the whole thing falls apart. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We want to do them now? Yep. Uh, that, well, how much wounds has that one suffered? That one has 11 wounds left. Oh, that one's fine. We're just going to roll for this one. Yep. So it suffered 10 wounds. It suffered or 10, or sorry, it has 15 wounds total. Oh, okay. for, So it suffered 11 wounds. So I need a two up in order to hit 13. That's perfect. But you don't want to roll a one. I do not want a one. Ah! I rolled a five. A Five, so that brings it up. So a vermin lord comes out. Any vermin lord, just vermin lord keyword. Yep. Uh, but that does shatter the bell, so it can't it can't cast Crack's Call anymore, nor can it um, do the Peel of Doom. The Peel of Doom. Yep. But we do get a vermin lord, which is kind of cool. Cool. Oh, we're going with the Eshin vermin lord, the assassin one, and it could be set up within three of the enemy if the screaming bell was within three of the enemy. Yep. So Radicar's got uh, big issues right now. I should have picked this finest hour. I did not expect this outcome. Uh, we are going to go to spell casting. Skitter leaping. Skitter leap. On an 11 <sighs> plus 2 is 13. You do have a primal dice. I got two primal dice. Uh, yeah, yeah. Why well, I got to roll so high on skitter leap? I'd almost rather. I'll let you do the skitter leap. I'd almost rather try and stop the vortex. I pick up that commander grace here. He's going to go right on top of that rock there. And, and then, then, do you want to resolve a second spell or just come back to it later? Um, his second spell, yeah, he'll do cracks calls. Oh, fair. Just yeah. to get it done. That works. Get it out of the way. On, uh, another, another 11. 13 plus 2. Oh, 13, that's right. Yeah, you can have it. How's the damage? 
Target the vampire, try and put him in the hole. Gotta spike damage. Don't so put the vampire in the hole. 2d6. So ah, he's doing anything. He's moved six, so he just he dodges out of the way. I was gambling. Go with initiative check back in fantasy. They used to be a save or die spell. Yep. So it's the same kind of same kind of odds here in a way. Yep. I was, you know, yeah, I was hoping. You, you pretty much need an eleven plus to like potentially one shot him. On to this grace here. He'll be doing the warp lightning vortex to start. Ooh, boom. Um, and he will be doing master magic. Yes, of course, yes. Uh, that's a miscast. Good thing he can re-roll that. No primal dice, though, after this. That is a true statement. Yeah. But so, ten. I get it off on a 10. I'm going to try and stop uh, with it. With an 11. You, but the, Yeah, you, we'll say, yeah, you're close yeah. enough, yeah. I will roll an 8. And then the only spell I care about is this one. Uh, I'll give you, you can, you can re-roll that. Re -roll nah, that. I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. Ah, there we stop it. There all we right. go. This is first spell done. But I don't have to worry about Vortex. Now. I can you do another spell. don't have to spell. worry about Vortex. Go ahead and just cast Wither for yep. a second spell. He'll do Wither. Just get a second spell off on a 9 plus 110. So that actually goes off. So he's my cat chosen wizard again. Uh, I got 1, 2, 3, 4 on Binds. If he's 1, I could try and stop this Wither. I'm trying to think. Of, I want to stop the Bell, and I want to stop Blizzard. Uh, this one has Blizzard. Yeah. Yeah, and you got two Primal Magic Dice, though. And the Vermin Lord is a two caster too. Oh jeez. Okay. Well, I'm not worried. I guess you know what? I'll just take the wither. <laughs> D three more wounds. It is. All right. And I'm gonna go Vamp for the vampire. Vampire it is. Uh, I have to roll two D six over his wound characteristic, so it might not actually get him. Okay. So it does. It does. So D three, one, one mortals. He's got the five up board. Maybe. Oh, that doesn't. He takes it. He's got four wounds left, I think. Four wounds, and then he's negative one to hit. Done there. This grace here finished this too. The bombardier is bombardier is gonna go with blizzard. Oh, this could be kind of rough for me. I don't like the pacing on this. Ten. Ten. Oh. Um, you are out of primal dice, I but am. I'm going to use one of mine just to make sure you don't get lucky. Yeah. Guy, and nice. All right. Forty-six mortal wounds. What are you thinking? Forty-six mortal wounds. I am really angry at these grave guard. Um, although they have probably Mortis engine will be the target for it. However, forty-six. Let me get that out of the way. Ooh, you take 2d3 mortal wounds for the two ones. I'll take 2d3, <laughs> which is fine, but you take 11. Yes, I have 11 ward saves to make. Take three to live the spell. He's dead. Ooh, barely. He takes nine damage and goes down. That means I don't have to remember any more of its rules. And the bombardier's wounds. 2d3, he has four left. I'll roll in this nice mortis engine sized hole right there. Oh, he's dead. He's dead. All right, sick trade. <laughs> we got a couple more spells to cast. This guy here. He's going to do Mystic Shield from the Grace here on the bell. Uh, oh. 10. He's not at any pluses because he's so down, and oh, I think geez. he's an inch away from the... Yeah, you know what? You got, you got the plus one for that. It's 11. Is that Mystic Shield? Mystic Shield. Who's that going on? Uh, that'll be on the Vermin Lord. All right. I keep that there, and then you get another Arcane spell. Arcane Bolt. Mr. Bolt. Uh... With a bonus, you got it. Uh, I don't think he has a bonus right now. He's got plus one for this. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Would you like to add Primal Magic Dice I am to not you know? going to add a Primal Magic Dice. Try and stop that. I don't. Okay, <laughs> awesome. So more Hurricane Bolt. You just want to just do it right now? I'm going to do it right now. Yeah, get out of the way, D3, D3 Mortal three, three Mortal Three of them on Radicard is kind of scary. He takes all three. He's got nine left. Okay. All right. I don't like the position I'm finding myself in here. I was very confident. Now it's like I'm still pretty confident, but I'm not very confident. Okay, well, that's him done. And then the Vermin Lord has a built in spell. He cast. has his built in spell of Dreaded Skitter Leap, uh, but I actually kind of like where he's at. Um, oh, the Eshin one has the same thing? Or is that just the Eshin one? He has one? Dreaded Skitter Leap. Okay. So he can move something within six. But I am actually going to cast Dreaded Skitter Leap because I can move that catapult. Okay, fair. Let's go. Boom, boom, boom. Got so that'll be an 11. I'll, I'll see if I have one on my left, I think. Nope, not going to happen. Go, and gone. Mobility is way just on the back corner now over there. All right. Oh, he's in my deployment zone now. My territory. Fine, fine, fine. That is probably it for casting, I yep. think. Yep. We he has go. one more cast. I don't have any other spells. All right, fair. Oh, no. He has the bell. Why not? Sure, I'll, the I'll bell. I'll out the bell. The Bell of Doom on an 8-9. You got it. Going right here. We can just roll for its... Uh, that it moves 8 Boom. So he'll move up to here, and, and then I roll 3d6 and see if bad things happen to everyone. 13, four, uh, That's eight. an 11. Oh, not quite. All right. Still in effect, though. Movement. This one's going to retreat, and we are going to secure that surround and destroy. So surround yep. and destroy is done. I got that one. I got this one. And you and got this one over here yep. as well. Two of them have to go to your territory, so you got that one over there and that one over there, which is good enough. Because, sorry, the catapult's on that long table edge. That one's on this short table edge over here, so we're good on that. Yep. Uh, do you have any other movement? It doesn't really look like it. 
Nothing to really move except that plate claw is going to jump in that knot hole and show up around this knot hole. Does that Gracie want to go in the knot hole and go somewhere else? Um, or is he happy where he is? I think he's um, happy where he's at. All right. If you want to move stuff back here, I'm not going to fight you. That's fine. I get it. I mean, that's where all your army's going. <laughs> I kind of have to go that way. The shooting? This guy's probably shooting, got shooting. Shooting phase. I got the three catapult and his ninja star. Well, he is going to go into Radicar, I suppose. Yep. Those nasty little throwing stars. He's a Doom Star, D6 attacks. Doom Star, one! one. All He's right. following the way of the rest of this army. Uh, three's to hit, which, does this go to fours? Yes. But still hits. And on a six, it takes two mortal wounds and the attack sequence ends. All right. Beautiful. I take both of those. I got seven wounds left. This prehensile tail stabbies. Uh, threes by threes, which goes to fours. fours. Yeah. Is it all attacks or just the throwing star? The throwing star Just the it. throwing star does immortals. The doom star. No and more. nothing. We're on to the three catapults. I want to take out the skeletons now. Skeletons. Fine. So this one unit, twos by twos. Hit. Hits. Wounds. Wounds. 2d6. Eight. Eight. Too far away from the better ward, so they got a six up. Nice. Uh, I lose five. I'm going to lose five from back here. Three, four, five for now. Making sure. We got about 14 left there. Next catapult into them. This one, same thing. Same idea. Twos by twos. Hit. Wound. Yeah, damage. 2d6. Whoops. That's fine. Oh! Eight. More damage. I ward one and reroll one. So I lose seven. All right. Uh, I kind of want to keep the banner. So one, two, three, uh, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I guess that's fine. Last one into him. It's only D6 damage now, so it can't kill them. And it's them. threes by two, so it still hit. Nice. Still wounds. And so it goes D6 through. D6 damage. D6 damage. Ooh, six. six. Not bad. <laughs> Even if I have one left. I ward. Ooh. Rerolls. Ooh, six damage. I, I got seven. One guy left. I got seven. I'm just a banner. I, yeah, I'll just keep the banner alive in the back. I don't know. Just in case something weird happens, I suppose. that There's the giant pile of skeletons that got hit by three different catapults. Okay. And they're all gonna come back. 19 rolls to see if they come back. And I don't think you have much more shooting though. Still goes to charge time, at least. That was close. Just one more damage that those the 20 skeletons would've been dealt with. Get the Master Molder Master in there. Master Molder's gonna charge in, that's about it. All right, beautiful, beautiful. Welcome. And he'll go on in. Just on the objective yeah. side, I assume. Hello, yep. hello and welcome. All right, fair. I, uh, I guess that's it. That's it for, I'm, I have Monstrous Rampage over there. Yes. On Radicar. He like doesn't, to, does he do have any good command abilities or just the normal ones? Normal ones, he could all out defense. It's um, or all out attack to try and heal wounds. I'd probably, I'd probably realistically try and all out attack and heal wounds on him. I think I'll, I think I'll roar. Okay. You know. Three up. I mean, the mortal wound, if you're like to do mortal wounds to him by stomping and then attacking right away, you might get him. Nah. No? Roar? All I'm right. Just, I'm just gonna roar. Roar. All right. That doesn't matter. No roar. And um, start of the combat phase. Start of the combat phase. I don't know if you have any, but actually I, I don't even know what this guy does. He kills things. He's just a fighter? Yeah. Okay. I will reanimate 19 or attempt to reanimate 19 zombies. Should say skeletons. Every four up, here's the first 10. So I'm getting five back. Take one of those away. And five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven back. So it's a twelve strong unit. An old 40k deep strike. They all have to spiral around to keep coherent to that one banner model. So they they do though, it still works. I would have been able to fit three or four more models, and then anything after that, I wouldn't have had the room. At least the way I like to do it. Anyways, uh, actual fighting. I'm gonna choose one of the most important models I have in my army. The Master Molder. Wow, this guy can heal a lot of wounds though. He immediately heals. You think you can one tap him from 12 health? That's a scary thing. So you're gonna order him, he's gonna attack with the Deceiver. And I am going, and you're going to, I'm um, sorry. Lord of Assassins is his command ability. For one command point, it gives him, it gives an Eshin a plus one to hit and wound. And he's Clan Eshin, so. I'm gonna all out defense here to try and mitigate one or two of these. It's two, it's two damage per? A three ren, two damage. Three ren, two damage. Okay, so the three ren gives me a six. I'll have a three up save, which means I'll have a six up save. All right, so the ability gives you plus one to hit wound, which counteracts his supernatural reflexes. So we're just back to your regular stiletto attacks. Yep. Threes to hit. All right. That's average. average. Yep, twos to wound. Ah, there's where it's a little scary. Is. That three could kill. Three ren, four at three ren. Sixes. 
The defense did not help him. He does have a ward save, though. So that goes to eight damage. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. He's dead. You got him. Boom, boom, boom. Radicar's down. There goes my general. Excellent move. That was an unfortunate circumstance for Mr. Radicar. Had I known the potential, I would have been smarter. And uh, actually, I don't know if uh, Finest Hour would have helped him out there too much. But I tried to dispel stuff. So, I mean, I have, I'd have to look at the rolls. I think there was a five in the pool there, though. Damn. I hate losing my big guy. All right, that is your pick. It's nothing I really want to fight with, but I guess I'll go with the white. The white king lets the zombies go. You know what? I think this battle has been going on long enough. The rest of the game won't be that interesting. I could, I can already see that I'll get five points for the next two turns, probably with the objectives I have, the battle tactics I have, are very simple ones. But it's going to be a lot of rolling for it. And winning don't matter to me too much. I only really care about the cool things. I don't think there's going to be any more cool things going on. So I'm going to throw in the towel for the Soul Blight here. We'll give the game to the Skaven. Because I just don't want to deal with the shenanigans anymore. <laughs> We've been playing all day. And it's not that all the interesting things have happened. That was the one thing I wanted to see. The yeah. Vermin Lord fighting Radicar. We did it. I should have all defensed. I just overestimated his survival capabilities there. I was hoping. I was hoping. I just needed to make... One save or two feel no pains, and we didn't quite get there. But I would have, I would have loved to see him fight back, and he'll back up those six wounds. That would have been dramatic. But he goes down. He goes into another fight. Uh, there's a lot of grinding. I kill them, fight them. I just deal with this with the grave guard, the vampire on my next I have, turn. I have the battle shot community, so yeah. like a couple rats are gonna die. You know, I'm gonna get mm. D3 back. You know, I'm, so hope, the, I'm hoping I could kill enough of them, but I won't actually. Yeah. But that would be on your turn again, right? So that'd yeah. be the bottom of four. My plan because of this bell. My battle tactic was to stay in combat with them, with the zombies. Yep. And then hopefully, and then that would be that bad. That was my one battle tactic. And I was going to deal with that. And the skeletons were going to go back and deal with him. Yep. That was my plan-ish for that. Then the rest of the game was just kind of grinding here while this guy runs around and does whatever he wants. By all means, actually, you might, it might end up being a victory for the Skaven because of this guy. The plan I had going forward is actually involving Radicar still hanging out here. So with this guy being free... And he has the yeah. dreaded skitter leap, so he can go anywhere he wants on the table, pretty that's, much. That's true. So I will, I will actually but say, I probably lose this game because of this, that exchange it, it'd there. It would be close because most of my good battle tactics are gone. Yeah, yeah. I right. think I think you can still nab one more battle I, tactic. I have intimidate the invaders because they have a good amount over here. Yep. So, but depending on what you kill and how the priority in a five goes. It'd be close, but yeah. this has been a slog fest. <laughs> Absolutely. And like, I, I have a very open secret. If I ever lose the, my biggest guy, I lose all interest in the game. Like, oh, I, I can see. That's it. I, I got nothing in me anymore. So whenever I lose my big fighting guy, that's it for me. I, that, that's, the, that's the primary objective against Luca. Kill him, and he, he'll give up the game. <laughs> so that is good for that. Again, it's like fight back there, fight over here. All that is kind of superficial. I'll get points, Andy will get points, and it'll come down to the priority roll on turn five. Uh, for the, I think that's yeah, pretty much that's, what it would come down to. That's pretty much what it comes, because I probably would get one, two, three, hopefully I'd kill that and I'd get more. Um, I don't know if I actually have this one or not, but yeah. That one you probably actually have, because I, I abandoned it, I didn't care, but like, yeah. I cared about it, but I just, I was at that point, I was too tired of all the little meticulous movements of Sigmar. Sometimes it's fun just to like push in and fight. This one was a little too grindy for, yeah. this, for I wasn't in the mood for something this grindy, Clan, I think. Clan Rats vs. Zombies is not a super interesting combat. No, yeah. We got the we got the couple of the intera intera interesting encounters over there with the yep. Hell Pit Abomination. The, Some gra of the, the grave guard wrecked face, man. They that, just, they were probably they probably one shot that uh, yep. engine there, no problem. So and, and the fact that your skeletons kept coming back, I couldn't finish him off with the Hell Pit. I couldn't finish him off with the catapults. Yeah, they were you know. they were resilient. The, the the five of board save came up pretty big too for me over there, which I was a big Absolutely. fan. Absolutely, that artifact. It's, that it's Viracos only, but yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, I guess you could technically take that on one of the name characters. The, the, all the Virko stuff says including unique characters, which is not the general rule of thumb there, but wanted to try it. I definitely like Radicar with the counts as 12 models on an objective. That is super nasty there. But this thing holding him up for as long as he did was kind of nice. The pacing for the Skaven worked out really nice. They kept them in just long enough. Again, had I won that priority on the last yep. turn, this guy would not have summoned this. Yep. So that was a big shift in power for you, too, when you kept priority going on to turn four, which I was hoping I would win that one. I wanted to win the third, fourth, or fifth one. If I got any one of those, I would have been in a much better spot. 
Not that I wasn't in a good spot at the end of this anyways. I'm still fine, I suppose. I could defend this objective with them. Yeah. I got the skeletons. I can go for them because I can rally and get more models you'd, closer you'd to the be, charge. You'd yeah. get your five for, yeah. for five, right? And you'd get your grand strategy. Uh, yeah, the grand strategy um, I'd be able to get, I think, too. It's and, tough because I have to control the grave sites, a majority of them. But yeah, so but you have the bodies to be able to do it. Yeah, and so my gray seers are still alive. Um, so I probably as, wouldn't kill them. Yeah, you know, as long as you don't kill all the gray seers, and I have two of them alive, I'd get my grand strategy. Yeah, and you might have probably pulled Actually, it ahead then because you're up by a point because you got it on turn three. Yeah, I think my turn four would have been me killing both those gray seers actually because yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't risk you getting a redeploy. I was gonna. What's it called? Uh, get three models back and just charge more. They were yeah to try and get the longer charge to uh, not yeah. allow the redeploy. And then those guys should take out that grace here with all those graveguard attacks. Maybe you do have the wards to pass off. I, I have the wards to pass off. Yeah. I have a potential redeploy. You're on a. F I wouldn't. Five. I wouldn't move it. I would. They would yeah. just stay right there. You're on a five inch charge. Yeah. You could probably get it. Yeah. So like my turn is pretty much no moving at all. But yeah. there's a lot of ands, ifs, and buts. So it would have been. A all in all, pretty damn close game. I don't think I really care to find out who the winner is. <laughs> I am uh, too tired to keep going. So I will say good game, Andy. This has been a very long battle report. Yeah. And we'll jump into a quick little post game afterwards. And paired with this battle report you just watched, we continue the action in the Mini War Gaming Vault, available to our YouTube and Vault members. Scary and Luca play 2,000 points of Seraphon against Sylvaneth. And it will be a Spring the Trap scenario. So if you're not a member and you want to see more Age of Sigmar action, you better believe we have a lot more to go along with it in the Vault. All you have to do is click on the link down below to take a peek and sign up for a 7-day free trial. And stick around if you like what we have to offer. You know what, Luca? Dinosaurs try to tip the scales in this one. And that is it for that. Uh, we will <laughs> see you next time. Enjoy the battle report. All right, we're going to keep this one nice and short because this man has got to get back to Detroit. Yep. And I want to go home and play video games. So, and I'm hungry too. So, generally, I don't think I'm going to be playing Soul Blade Grave Lords again for a while. I'm burnt out of that. And you said uh, you were done with Skaven for yeah, a bit too. I, I've been playing Skaven for a while, and I'm thinking I'm going to switch over to Lumineth as my main for a while. So Just, you saw that video probably yesterday or the day before. It might even be the week before. All right. If I, if I had to guess, it's the week before you've seen the Lumineth video. Yeah. So... Nice and quick, Lumineth. They're straight to the point. Well, they, they're complex, but like they they are like a fine needle. They just go right for the victory, go for the throat, die the winner, they lose they're, on that. Yeah. They're, they're not survivable. They're not. I, I don't play Alarith, so they're not survivable. Right. You know, they're either going to kill you or they're going to get smashed. Get killed. And usually the game is like, in my experience against the Realm Lords, it's like first two turns, a lot of fighting, a lot of killing. Turn three, there's not a whole lot of models yep. left on either side. And then it's just scrambling around for victory points yep. on turn four or five with whatever you have left. We were going into turn four, or the bottom half of turn yep. three on that one, and I was missing a dire wolf unit that came back in Bradicar, and that was it. You were missing a hell pit, and, and that... All my acolytes would die. Sure, I got that. Yep, acolytes. You know? <laughs> but yeah, go, going into four, right? I had my acolytes gone, and I had a hell pit gone. And that was it, right? This, this was a pillow fight of a game, like yep. just a mob in the middle. Yep. You couldn't do enough damage, and yep. I was just keeping my guys alive with just the rats enough. coming yep. back and the Battleshock community. Yep. Oh, that's right. I killed the uh, giant rats when they came back. Oh, yep. yep. I mean, I had we both had big plans, a lot of die rolls to go. I just did. I'm tired. I just <laughs> That was nuts. I didn't expect... Okay, I actually didn't expect it to be that grindy. I thought you were gonna bombard me with your artillery. Yep. I would push forward, we would fight for a little bit, the dust would settle and that was it. But just because the pacing of it, Radicar getting tied up with the the yep. throne, not the priority, not swinging the way I needed it, when I needed it, and uh, you're just holding the bell in the right spot at the right time. Wasn't there all game, but it was there at the right times. Yep, and yeah. then the, the screaming bells being tanky, I could shrug off enough yeah. wounds to keep them alive. And the fact that we were playing on the narrow ends, yep. right? We couldn't get enough of our fighty pieces around to all fight at the same time. And you, well, you had and you had the oh, oh Sk Skitter Leap and Dreaded Skitter Leap yep. as tools yep. and all the gnaw hole capabilities. I didn't want to keep my units back to deny the gnaw holes. My stuff's kind of expensive, so yep. I figured I would just push through and have the things that die summon in the back to support me like the dire wolves did so and at the same time yeah. you had the primal dice that you were stopping the vortex from yeah, coming out couldn't let that thing go down so that thing's way too powerful my magical damage was non-existent in this game either people might be ex yeah people might be thinking you're overthinking the vortex i think you just kill all my characters in like yep. one swoop maybe not the necromancer because of the zombies but the white king and the vampire with that five aboard save relic gone out of there it's, no it's problem it's so yeah. much it's so much splash damage it is it's a and lot then it, 
you'd have to dispel it on a nine. Yes. So. Yep. It's not like it, the second it, the second is on the table, it's gonna hit you twice, and then you're gonna have a hard time getting rid of it. Yeah. It's one of the nastiest endless spells, I think. Uh, for it's like it's influence in the game. Yeah. yeah, it's got a lot, a lot of splash damage there. But I mean, great game all the same. Like win or fun. lose, that that game would have been freaking amazing. Yeah. And no matter what the outcome there was, yeah. and hopefully you guys enjoyed it. For anyone who's upset that it kind of just ended abruptly, just that's you guys out of uh, exhaustion. If you've ever been to a, the point of the game where it's like neither one of you really want to keep going too much, it's like what's the point of continuing, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't think I I would be more than happy with a the loss there. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. that game was outstanding. It's it a memorable a, it was, one. It was a good game, definitely one to, to remember. Oh, so wanted to give a quick shout out to Gray Matter Gaming, of course. Yep. You guys, if you watched the last week's video, we went into great details about what the company was. Well, let's give a let's hit them up with a refresher. What do we got going on here? So our main that we want to make your games better. Whether it's Warhammer, uh, AOS, 40K, Marvel Crisis Protocol, Kill Team, Warcry, Shatterpoint. Um, we make mats in all game sizes. We yes. make objective markers, neoprene, acrylic. We make the magnetic movement trays that you saw that we were both using for, he had them for the zombies. I got them all back on the zombies right away. That yep. I, Next time I go play with those zombies, easy, done. I yep. like it. I appreciate that kind of for stuff. The, yeah. For the giant rats and the clan rats, it just makes moving it better, right, yes. and easier. You can take them out and just put them right on the table. I get that's the that's the, the biggest thing for me. For like for me, it's the, it, it, it's taking them to the B roll room, taking them into the table, getting them off the shelf. Yeah. That's a unique one for me. But for anyone with carry magnetic carrying cases, just taking five, ten guys yep. off the case without having to trade them up afterwards, that's kind of nice. Yeah. Yeah. And then you just put it away easier and they're ready to go for next time. It speeds up your starting the game and they're affordable. They're only two to three bucks each. We sell them in packs of five for about 10 to 12. Sorry about that folks, audio issues on that one. I'm not surprised the battery died on that one. That was quite a long one. We're towards the end of it anyway, so I figured we'll just go with the, uh, the camera mic approach on this one. Anyways, we're talking about the movement trays. I especially like how low profile they are. They don't stand out. They don't they, they don't have a shine, they don't have a gleam, yep. you don't have to paint them, you don't have to flock them, nothing. You just put your models on them, you either get the tight ones, or the ones that are spreading your coherency out a little bit more. It gives you the options of all that stuff. Yep. And of course, new company. You guys have come out within yep. the last year, maybe a little bit over a year? How no, about not, not quite a year. Not We're even quite a year. A year anniversary in about two weeks. Okay, well, perfect. And then with new companies come new matte designs, ones you yep. haven't seen before. Maybe you're specifically looking for a desert mat right you have the uh, the dusty dunes yep we have sandy dunes sandy dunes and we have another one that's desert pass that's more like a deserty ruin style yes so you know it just depends on your options but we like to give options high quality mats you know good quality they're thinner material they all come with a bag so and it's good pricing oh uh, we offer free shipping in the united states 73 dollars Flat rate shipping to Canada and the UK. And they come with the uh, like a hardened cardboard yeah. roll inside of it so that w they don't bend or fold when they're in their case. They just stand up straight. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about damage to them. Josh has got it right here. I was kind of looking for that. There it is right there. Yep. So they have this. You know, it's a sturdy cardboard core. You can look right in there. So it's not something thin it's and flimsy. thick, yeah. You know, that way all. you can store it. You don't have to worry about them uh, staying in your closet for a long period of time. and becoming damaged and that way they'll they'll keep their form and they roll tight around as well and they have a little strap to keep them um yep like a tight well to the pole essentially yeah, yeah just to kind of keep it nice and tight and when you play it you unroll it you don't have creases on it and you know it's just something a little nicer you know try to make it a bit easier for people to play with yeah a little more you know bang for your buck it lasts longer yep. you don't have to worry about the neoprene wearing out or cracking or yep. any of that nonsense and uh, all that good stuff. And of course you have the, I don't know if you mentioned it, I think you did the objective markers that match the battle mats yep. as well. If you want, or you have ones that don't match, you have acrylic ones as well. It's a kind of, the idea is you have options. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the things, you know, everybody likes playing their own way and that's awesome. And so we make objective markers that have their double-sided neoprene. So that way you have options when you play. If you don't like the neoprene ones, you just want to see the mat, we love our mats too. So <laughs> we make acrylic ones that you can see through and they're not going to mask your mat, right? You can see exactly what it is. Exactly. So. That. And that is all at graymattergaming.org. Again, it will be in the description down below to check it out. It won't take too much time. You might see something that catches your eye. And as always, thank you, Andy, for the game. Thank you for coming yep. by. And thank you for this beautiful battle mat. You know, I, this is this one is easily my favorite. I like it specifically for the roads and everything. And I promise you guys at home, you will be seeing more of it to come. Awesome. And as always, 
Happy Wargaming, everyone. Thank you. Lucas <laughs> <Luca's> gotta go. <laughs> <laughs>